All right, then. We got set up a little bit sooner than I thought we would, so we're just going to go ahead on and go with it. We'll just go live. Who all we got in here today? Let's take a look and see. First off, let me turn this camera around for a minute. Well, no, I better not because it right there is getting about it. Okay, let's see here. We've got Chris Everett. What's going on? Mike Sampson. What's up, Sampy? Good to see you in here. Okay. Mark Dan UK is in here. Josh Thompson. Welcome in. Uh, Chris Everett, Martin. And I think that's pretty much what we got right now. Johnny Small Pepper. Hey, Johnny, how's it going, buddy? We were going to fish the main river uh, today, but... Uh, you know, we fished it last night with uh, Brandon from uh, Outdoors Unsupervised, and it was just so much grass uh, floating down that river that it was just bending the rods. And we did manage to catch one channel cat last night that is 5.9 pounds, but uh, we was just fighting way too much grass to uh, go out there and do it today. I want to come out here on a Sunday. I got the sun shining on me. And I want to do the easiest, most laid-back trip that I could possibly do. Weekend Angler. There's Mr. Josh Dunnigan. And uh, Brian B., what's up? Good morning, brother. Or Wait a minute. What time is it? Oh, hell. Good afternoon. <laughs> Freaking clock's moved up an hour on the mail. Just to show you how lazy I'm being today, that's about as far as I'm getting from the truck. <laughs> I'm not doing. It's Sunday, and I'm wore out from last night, uh, fishing and fighting grass and weeds and trash and and uh, man, we're gonna fish here Sunday, and we're just going, man, we're gonna do this like some old Andy Griffith stuff, man. We're just gonna chill out on the bank, and relax. You know what I'm saying? Let the sunshine hit us in the face, get as close to the truck as possible, and throw those rods out. You know what I'm saying? It's just gonna be a chillaxing kind of day. I'm going to let Jerry Parker do all the hard work today, man. Uh, for y'all that didn't hear, uh, he caught a fish this morning. Uh, it maxed out. It maxed out a Mad Cat's hog scale. It hit 110 pounds on the scale, and the scale wouldn't go no higher. So the Mississippi River Rats is doing pretty good this year. I'm getting on some pretty decent fish. Jerry Parker, he's still staying on the big fish like he has been. So we'll see what we got coming for y'all this year. Hopefully, hopefully it stays good and we don't wind up with the with the the boo boo bucket <laughs> like we did last year. It was tough last year, but I'm hoping it gets better this year. We'll see. All right, where did I leave off at? Oh my God, let me back up here. Said hello to Johnny Small Pepper. Lisa Elliott there. Hey, I got the Lisa Rod. She's right there, baby. She's chilling out today. We're going to try to see if we can't pull a few little channel cats in here. Maybe, just maybe, because the river is right around that bend, right down there. All right. But there's a lot of grass and trash and sticks and stuff uh, blowing down that river. And I'm hoping maybe some of them bigger blue cats will move up in here chasing these uh, shad and skipjack. Keep in mind, Last February, not this year, but year before last, at that spot right there, I caught a 63 pound blue about this time this year. So they do move up in here, and the water was about this depth when that happened, too. Okay, where was Elisa Elliott, Johnny Small Pepper, Chris Everett, uh, Annette's Catfishing? Welcome in, good to see you. I'm struggling to see the phone, but I'm getting, I'm managing, I'm managing. Uh, fishing the Mid South, already caught a catfish. A hard head. Oh, dude, that's right. You're down there. Uh, you're down there in Florida, brother. Man, I wish I was with you. I truly do. I wish I was down there with you because we'd have a good old time. Sure would. I love fishing Florida. Guerrero Bagre. How you doing, brother? Uh, everybody saying hi to everybody. Hello, Billy Moonshiners. Probably won't pull no monster out of here. You got a chance at maybe a 25 or a 30. Like I said, my biggest fish out of this spot was the 63 last February. And uh, Jerry Parker was on screen fishing with me when I caught that. I caught it on the Mad Cat's Lisa Rod. That's the biggest fish I've caught on the Lisa Rod was that 63-pounder. Caught him right underneath that tree right there last year. And I told you that once. I'm getting old and getting redundant. 
That means I repeat things more than once. You know what I'm saying? There was something biting on that blue mad catch, that panther right there just a minute ago. But we're going to be dealing with a whole lot of little peckerhead cat, uh, channel cats today. So that's just is what it is. But yeah, Parker's got a monster on the boat this morning. Uh, he's doing real good. He caught, dude, he caught 521 skipjack yesterday. Yeah. So all them guys that think they know how to catch skipjack. <laughs> well, good luck beating that. I'm sure they'll say they have, but. I'm calling BS on it because that's a pretty good haul. He dumped them things out on the carport and he couldn't, he damn near filled up the garage. Oh, let's see. Martin, everybody's still saying hi. Mike Sampson. It's, uh, I'm trying to get down here and see what's going on with y'all. This is going to be one of the fiddle fart bites today where they just peck on it and they drop slack and you got to reel up and, and kind of time it just right and try to get them. Catfish regulators there. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Um, there's my PB buddy, burrito catfishing lady. How you doing, sis? Lisa Swain. Uh, I won't be trying for no PBs today. I'm just, hey, we're going to take a lazy Sunday, man. Just sit out here and chill out on the bank. Let the sun shine on our shoulders. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. And we're going to do that today. It's going to be a laid back day, y'all. Size matters. Catfishing, there's my buddy, Andrew. Let's see here. Let's see, Jerry should have had got one of the DNR scales and possibly been a record of some sort. Well, uh, our state record here, I think it's like 130 or one or 132 or something like that. Um, Jerry looking at the fish and, and, and you know, because I told him, I said, Jerry, you might have uh, threw a state record back. And he said he's looking at it and, and we're guessing it was probably you know, around the one low low 120 mark, you know, the 120 something or whatever. But, but yeah, we're fair. But since the scale showed uh, maxed out at 110, uh, I'm not sure if he got any measurements on it or not. I hope he did. But uh, he called me as soon as he got that fish on the boat. And, uh, dude, he was shaking like a leaf in a hurricane. I'm telling you, he was excited. And he was pumped up. And I doubt very seriously in all that excitement that he took time to get some measurements. But you never know. Jerry Parker's a hell of a fisherman. And he might have uh, he might have got his composure together and got that done. We didn't have that discussion. We was too excited about the fish. So when I got off the phone with him, I thought, Daggum, man, I should have told him to measure that thing. And Cold Creek Billy, welcome in. Man, you talking about getting some good phone calls whenever – when these guys hook into a monster and you hear your phone ringing, it kind of tickles me that, you know, you're one of the first ones they call. And you know, I, I just I just have to wonder, is he calling me? Because, uh, you know, he's one of my best buddies and he wanted me to know about it. Or is he trying to rub my nose in it? <laughs> With Jerry Parker, it could go either way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there ain't no telling. Uh, he said he had a blast catching skip yesterday with Parker. Took home nearly 200 on your own. Wow. Man, you guys ought to get some kind of title for that or something, shouldn't you? I mean, like the skipjack magicians or I don't know, something. Maybe. You know, maybe you should get a title for catching that mean skipjack. Hold on, catfish regulars. 51 length, 34 in girth. Are you talking about the fish or are you talking about Jerry Parker? <laughs> Because this sounds about right. <laughs> oh, God. I think Parker's more like 48 in length. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, Jerry. Suck it up, Buttercup. You got a beautiful fish on the boat today. You ain't got nothing to cry about. Oh, that can steal some skipjack, shav, and uh, 
no 500. Oh, God, yes, Josh. I, that, that's what me and Stacy was talking about. When Jerry sent me the pictures of all them skipjacks, she goes, she goes, oh, my God. I said, you know what a nightmare would be putting all them up. And I'm like, I know it. I know it. It would absolutely be a nightmare. Stuart the Fish Whisperer, welcome in. Good to see you, Stuart. How far behind am I anyway? Uh, Chris took mine away. <laughs> oh, my God. 1435, make sure you hit that button. Oh, thank you, Guerrero. Appreciate it. Please smash and share out. Thank you. Thank you. Steph Balloran. Hello, Danny. Wish you uh, had more fish than yesterday with Brandon. We caught one last night, and, and you know what? It was the it was colder than the Dickens out there, and there was a whole lot of grass floating down and stuff, so that kind of messed us up. I know that I could probably get more fish if I was further down that way. I need to, I need to be around that bend, but to, to get where I want to be there, I'd have to drag the uh, load the kayak up on the boat or the truck and uh, drag the kayak over here, and I just ain't got the energy for it. Plus, you guys know my chest is kind of messed up right now, so breathing is kind of a, it's a labored chore for me if I'm doing any kind of activity. Small water charters, John. Man, I had my buddy uh, fishing mid south down there, uh, hanging around down upper part of Florida. There somewhere up in there, you can track him down, and teach him how to fish. Oh, wishing you was fishing burrito, uh, catfish lake. Wish I was fishing, can't just yet. Okay, well, we'll try to do our best for you. I need to go over and catch me some fresh skipjack just right over here to the right. I'm throwing these frozen ones this morning i'm trying to use up all this uh uh cotton picking dude i got a, i still got a bunch of skipjacks in the freezer from last year that me and parker and all of us went and caught and uh, i'm trying to burn through these things and get rid of them so i can uh get some fresh in there okay what's going on day day stone hs outdoor life well we're going to try to for a few channel cats and maybe some small blue cats will be out there I'm not sure how they're going to do today. We'll see. Temperatures dropped down kind of cool last night. So, you know, it may take a minute for them to get worked up and start biting. We did have a hit on that blue mad cat's rod there a while ago. But it was definitely a channel cat bite. He was just pecking at it. They got measures that can't be right. 51 by 34 only comes out to 73 pounds. Well, you know, Parker can't read or right, so... <laughs> He damn sure can't do math. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure he screwed it up somehow. That's what we do. Trophy Seekers Outdoors. Oh, Daryl. Oh, man. If you guys ain't checked it out, uh, Daryl's been doing a lot of hard work. Daryl's been putting in the extra effort. Uh, doing, uh, they're doing raffles and stuff, and they're and they're trying to raise money for uh for Big Mike for his wife who's uh had some uh pretty serious medical issues and stuff. And Daryl has really been going above and beyond. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of Daryl because you know he always freaking does that. I mean, you know, Daryl's kind of a goober, but uh. One thing about Daryl is, man, he's one of the most uh, generous and uh, caring people you'll ever meet. Mate. And when I call him a goober, I mean that with a, you know, it's lighthearted joking at him. But Daryl knows how I think about him, freaking goober. But, <laughs> but Daryl is an amazing person that's doing stuff for, for amazing people. And so you guys, you know, check it out. Look around, find on there. Uh, I know they're doing some stuff tonight or whatever. And uh, I think Thursday is, I, I, I just heard this uh, uh, when I was kind of getting ready to go fishing. So I don't want to screw nothing up. Daryl can tell you guys more about it. But I think Thursday they're doing the raffle and racing the money for, for Big Mike. But again, Daryl, hats off to you. You always show up in a pinch to help uh, your fellow fishermen out. And I'm, I'm really proud to know you and proud to call you my friend. And I'm just proud of you in general, brother. You're a great person, and I love you to death. Fishing with bacon. The real truth about the three big cats of the week is you guys finally started to fish using bacon. Now you can, man, stop telling everybody that. 
I am nowhere near the bottom of this, am I? Randy Swain, great old gray here, man. What's going on, buddy? Uh, I am nowhere near the bottom of this, Mark. Hey, we can get, uh, get together. Oh, guys, I'm fixed to just slap this thing and scroll to the bottom. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I'm trying to get there, y'all. Oh, gosh. Uh, I am so freaking far behind. So if you can't fish for the lick, I can't, brother. I can't. Uh, if if I was good as you, I mean, I, I catch I catch pretty decent fish on Mississippi River. But if I was good as you, man, I'd be breaking records left and right. I, I, I've got the I've got the location. I've got the bait. I just ain't got the skill, buddy. I just need some trophy seeker outdoors lessons. That's what I need. <laughs> God, it hurt to say that. <laughs> I almost choked myself. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Fields to Water's eyeballs are in here. What's up, Chadwick? Good to see you. Man, how far behind am I? My God, my God. Uh, talk to Mary. They were two in shock. There's fish. Oh, that way. Yeah, he's, he was shaking like a leaf in a. He's shaking like a dog trying to poop out a peach pit. <laughs> That's freaking Parker, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, uh, watch the video. The measurements is 51, 34, 34, divided by 873 pounds. Oh, controversy. Bobcat will be known as Bobcat Thursday night. That, well, I mean, I thought he already pretty much was. <laughs> he said he's going to shave his head for that. I said, what are you going to do? He's going to pluck out two hairs. That's all he's got left. Oh, let's see. Well, he came down here to teach you, Ella. Let's see, Bo Dash. I don't used to fish in Mississippi. What's the trick to not losing your tackle? Me and my family met you last summer, and we'll plan on making a trip there. Well, you know what? It depends on where you're fishing. Because if you go fish the spots, Bo, if you go fish the spots where you're going to catch fish, you're going to lose freaking tackle. There's just no really way to avoid it. What I do, uh, recommend though is using a three-way rig with a breakaway weight uh i got a video on that somewhere way 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 back on my channel but several other people could have uh, videos of of using a three-way rig with a breakaway uh weight uh at least you can save your swivel and your hook 90 percent of the time but uh to catch the fish in the spots that we're at <clears throat> if you really want the good fish you're going to have to sacrifice some gear because it's just that's just the way it is you know, but the three-way rig with a breakaway weight is your best option for fishing this area that I'm in here. Not this spot right here. This is the muddy bottom. You can pretty much get away with down there anything. Uh, but yeah, that's my tip for you. Bobcat will be shaving his head Thursday, and Dustin will be shaving his beard. Mud well, guys need to just donate all the, both those hairs to Locks of Love. <laughs> Uh, so I keep watching your channel. I'm trying to learn. There you go. There you go. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you, everyone. Made my trip to USA. Martin, you're welcome. You're welcome. I know a lot of people did a whole lot to help you out there because they were honored to do it. And it was their pleasure because we'll get our turn soon. Let's see. I think they got confused at measurement tail for the girth. You know what? It's freaking Jerry Parker. If, if, if he screwed something up, it's just not surprising at all. Mm -mm -mm. Man, it was nice and warm here. Now the freaking wind started to blow. What the crap is that? Where'd that wind come from? I ain't asked for no breeze today, folks. I didn't. This is full crap. It's just as calm as it could be here today. And I set up all this stuff. And as soon as I got settled in and comfortable, 
then the freaking wind starts blowing. What is that bull crap all about? Am I anywhere near the bottom of this? I'm not, Emma. I'm just going to skip ahead. Uh, 922 crop barbecue, blah, 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 blah. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> I think we're caught. There's Mo Dog in the house. What's going on, Mo Dog? Good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> I should have got on the other, other shoreline over there because the wind's blowing this way. Now I could have tucked in behind that bank and got this wind out of my face. Let's see, Riggs, that's also why the measurement can't always be trusted. Hmm. I don't know. I know it's just a big old fish, man. It is what it is. That's the big one. If Jerry Parker tells me it's 110 pounds, I'm going to call it 110 pounds because, uh, you know, big fish as he catches, he ain't got no reason to say nothing but the truth. But we're going to try to catch a 10 pounder today. <laughs> we can add it to Jerry Parker's 110 and say it's 120. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wonder if Jerry knows his fly was down in the picks. Um, yeah, he leaves it down. You didn't know that? He, he knows it. Uh, Parker walks around with his pants unzipped. Uh, that's part of his, uh, you know, it's like, you know, where's Waldo? You got to. <laughs> I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Parker never zips his pants up. He just walks around like that. <laughs> That's why I always keep him out in front of me. I don't want to get behind me on no situations whatsoever at all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I ain't even been looking at these rods. Um, I'm throwing that old frozen bait. I need to get some of that. Uh, Rowdy Roll, welcome in. Good to see you. If the fish don't start biting soon, I'll just turn this camera around where I can goof off a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Let me get her and get me a Mountain Dew, too. Oh, the skip jacks are jumping. That was popping earlier. <laughs> uh, let's see. They ain't gone anywhere, Danny. Hey, no, supposed to be looking at the fish, not the trousers. You know what? I, I fished with Parker for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, you just know certain stuff. Like, you start to go live, and he goes, hold on, wait a minute. I got to unzip my pants. Don't turn the camera on yet. <laughs> it's just, Parker's one of his trademark things that nobody notices. He just wants to see if he... He always said, you know, I want to see how long, I mean, shows I can do with my pants unzip before somebody notices it. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Just give her a shot. Go for it. <laughs> I said, just be careful where you're slinging that hook. Mm. Oh, last one we got. Dude, um, we just got set up here a little bit. Well, I had one little bit of tap on that blue rod while I go, we ain't got no fish yet. We ain't got nothing. We're we're basically just out here goofing off and trying to get a tan, man. You know what I'm saying? Today is relaxing Sunday. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about. I'm, I'm, you know, we're throwing some rods out just for the hell of it. But basically, I'm just getting as close to the truck as I can and taking it easy. You know what I'm saying? Just going to chill out today. Oh, I am so freaking tired. I worked all week. I worked yesterday morning. Oh, and my chest is still killing me. <clears throat> we worked yesterday, got up early, went to work, and worked till noon. Then run home, loaded up all the gear, got everything in the truck, and then beat feet over here to the river. And then uh, the temperature dropped like crazy last night. And I was over here with Brandon uh, Clark 
from uh, Outdoors Unsupervised. We managed to get one channel cat last night. But boy, I tell you what, I slept in a little bit this morning. Or I thought I did. I got up and I found out that they'd moved the clocks ahead an hour, so I didn't get that extra hour that I thought I did. <laughs> you know how it is. Oh, man. Keep an eye on these rods. I ain't doing nothing. We're going to keep an eye on them anyway. Oh. Uh, throwing poles out just for hell that sounds just like Parker. Well, yeah. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with going out on a Sunday afternoon and finding a nice little easy spot to get to. Um, most of the fishing that we do, uh, man, it is an absolute uh, chore to get to the spot, get set up. Uh, every now and then, man, I just like to find a spot that's easy to get to and just, you know, just chill out. If you catch a fish, you catch a fish. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, you don't. Ooh, that J Dog rod right there, just the line was slack and it just pulled out real, real fast. So I don't think the guard moved up in here yet, but it might be a drum. He pulled the slack out of that rod real quick. Let's we'll see if he's going to get on there. On the J Doggy D, J Doggy rod. That ain't the J Doggy D, that's coldest rod. But uh, yeah, I want to take a minute and, and, and say happy birthday to uh, two people. Uh, number one, my granddaughter Coda. You guys know Coda today is Coda's birthday, and uh, and also happy birthday to my buddy Jerry Parker, who is fifty years old today, and his old ass managed to land a big old fish that he's gonna feel tomorrow. Cause you're fifty years old now, Jerry. You got. I'm glad you caught all those big ones before you turn 50 because they're going to start hurting now. Yeah, it, it ain't as easy as it used to be. You're going to feel it. You know, when you catch a big fish now, the next day you're like, holy crap, where did that pain come from? Get used to it, sucker. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> oh, no, Wyatt, what's up? Da, 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 da. Let me see. Uh, fishing Bulldog says, I get stressed fishing. I need to try the relaxed type of fishing. Dude, watch me. Watch me. Okay. Am I there? I don't know. Center here or not. Look at this. You got the rods out there. Don't even worry about it. You got the truck parked as close as you can get, so it's minimal effort on your part. Look here, watch. Ready? Uh, yeah. I don't care if it's bad or not. Oh, I feel like sunshine on me. Oh, it feels so good. It's Sunday. It ain't nothing happening but uh, just, you know, resting and relaxing. If a fish bites, he'll ruin it all. <laughs> It'd be my luck if fish start biting just to screw up my my relaxing time. You know what I'm saying? You go cut into my relaxing time. Uh, okay. Hey, that daggum wind, it can blow somewhere else. I just don't care for it. Oh, good God. There's real time catfishing. Let me know if you need to borrow another catfish. I'll see what to do. Do you know what? Every time you catch a little bitty one, I always catch one a little bit bigger. So you just get out there and get one of them little ones for me. If boy comes from here, Danny, everybody driving and listening. Okay, Freddie, good to see you. Hey, Freddie, today is Coda's birthday. And uh, she's uh, she's not at, uh, at our house this weekend, but she will be next weekend, and we'll uh, we'll just do a late birthday party for her next week. Josh Thompson, throw big rods out for catfish and bluegill fish at the same time. Yeah, man, just, I mean, Hey, just do what it's Sunday. Just go out here and find the easiest opportunity you can to get set up and do some fishing without min with minimal effort and just relax, man, and don't worry about it. If fish don't bite, who cares? I mean, we'll catch fish tomorrow or the day after that or something like that. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of time to catch fish, but you know what? It don't hurt to just take a day every now and then, especially on a Sunday. 
man, Sunday's a great day just to chill out and just take it easy. It's what you're supposed to do anyway, you know. Three nights, what's going on? Man, I got the hiccups. Where the crap did that come from? Oh, let's see. Job boys catfishing. Hey, job boy. Welcome in. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Them fellers over there just trying to figure out how to get set up down there. I hope they don't throw across my lines. Because I throw way down there where they're at. I hope they're planning on throwing downstream and not upstream. If they up, throw upstream, I'm going to be reeling their rods in. But if they do, they do. I don't care. It ain't nothing but a thing. I think we need to take some of this old skipjack off here and chop up some. Uh, I've got some, a little bit fresher shad. I can use it. We'll cut that up and throw it on there. Because they don't seem to be interested in this old skipjack at all. It's something I caught last year. and uh, Like I said, I'm just trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to use it up. Get it out the freezer. Have it gone. La, 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 la. NJ, what's up, my broski? Good to see you. Anybody want to come hang out? I don't care. We'll do it. Let's just hang out on a Sunday. What do y'all say? I'll give you the opportunity. Like right now. We got extra iron daylight to fish today, boys. It's going to be extra, extra special. I don't know if we're going to take advantage of that or not. We might, we might not. Ooh, man, there's something big just jumped over there. Or that guy fall in the water. Something splashed. I don't know. It might be that fella slipping going in the water down there. Rod's Fishing Adventures. Uh, he caught anything. No, he caught nothing yet. But like I said, we're just channel catting it today. We're going to see if we can't catch a couple of channel cats. I may get me a couple small ones to take them home and eat them. Now, the gar ain't moved up in here yet. Uh, not like they will. When, now, when the summertime hits and it's hot, this is the last spot on earth you want to fish because there are so many freaking gar in here you can walk across their backs. Hmm. Hold on a second. Just give me a second. I got, I'm in a bad angle. It looked like that rod down there was pulling. I think I need to change my angle of my camera because I'm looking straight at the back of that rod and I can't tell if it's moving or not. It looked like it was getting bumped. Pan size fiddler. You ain't kidding, man. That's some of the best eating fish you can get right there. Little fiddler cats, man. Everybody's looking for a spot to fish. They're walking around and wishing and wish. They go, I wish I was there back there. It's down where he's at. You ain't got to worry about it because they ain't biting here either. Man, they are smoking. Uh, they're flat tearing them up. They're, they're catching the white bass down here. Right by, by that spillway down. Th that's what most of them guys are doing. They're fishing for white bass, and them things are on fire. I mean, they're burning them up down there. They are catching the crap out of them. Uh, this guy walks up, asks, what's up with mower? Is it scrap? Oh, bitch, I haven't, oh, no. oh I have, I've, I've completely missed a conversation somewhere. Okay, I'll go back and read that. Well, uh, we jumped more out in the driveway yesterday. Got stocks. What was the deal with it? We're fishing. Come back. Someone loading up. Not the guy. Oh, you got people fighting over a uh, scrap, man. It happens. They beat the crap out of each other right here for that kind of stuff. What is y'all size limit on stripers? You know what? Uh, I don't know what the size limit on stripers here. Uh, I'd have to look that up. I do not know the answer to that question because I don't generally striper fish. I used to a little bit, but I kind of got away from it. And I have not kept up with the uh, current regulations and stuff on it. Since I ain't fishing for them, I don't need to know. You know what I mean? If I catch one, I generally just throw it back anyhow. 
Uh, that being said, though, you know, uh, I ain't cooked up a striper in a long time. I wouldn't mind getting one, throwing him on the grill, man. You know, stake him up. <clears throat> Oh, the other guy had permission. That one didn't. He just loaded up. Hey, people just, you know, they, they just do what they want to do nowadays. They don't care about no rules or regulations or no or nothing, man. They just do whatever the hell they want. Oh, he's fixed to throw cast net. You all watch him throw cast net? He goes. See if he does anything. There's a bunch of skipjacks running up through there. There's a few shad. I'm going to throw my net there. There's so much stuff, it'll tear it all to pieces. I'll wait till he's ready to throw. Eddie Gropes, what's going on? Oh, Lord have mercy. Maybe we can get a Mountain Dew out of the truck. I don't feel like walking all the way over there, though. It's so far away. Ugh. I don't know if I can make it. Mm. Man, I wish I'd parked a little closer. I'm really thirsty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be one of those days. <coughs> I've got to have checked. Ah, I didn't have station wrap my chest up this morning. A big mistake. You should have wrapped it up, Danny. You dummy. We're balloon cat channel cat tattoos here. At Frankfort, Virginia stores patrol. Well, you throwing out a whole lot of information there. <laughs> He throw that net. He throw that net yet. Well, that wind blowing's got the. I may have put my jacket on. It was nice here when I pulled up here. It's not so much anymore. It's wind starting to blow. I'm getting killed now. Dad gum it. I didn't want to do that. I was hoping to just lay out here in the sun and have a nice day. But no. Let's put the wind on Danny and see how he likes that. I kind of wish I got a hold of Austin and brought the kayaks down here, though, to be honest with you. I'd like to paddle down that right down there today. Would have been nice. I'd love to have gotten down there today. But I really, to be honest with you, I'm full of crap because I just really don't feel like doing that much work. Just want to chill out today. 48 people in the house on YouTube, 7 on Facebook. Let me grab my jacket, y'all, just until this wind stops. Y'all, watch me make a trip to the truck in case something happens. It's a long ways. I don't know if I can make it. Turn sideways, my hip pop. Yeah, I moved my leg the wrong way and made my hip pop. I'm like, that hurt like hell. Whew. All right, back to it. <clears throat> there you go. Oh, yeah. You want some? 
Just a little bit. Don't y'all 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 try to drink my whole damn soda. You ain't getting no more. That's it. Ugh. Refreshing. Yeah, that cold night last night really screwed up the fishing everywhere, I guess. I don't know. It slowed them down to a crawl. Water has come back up a little bit, which, you know, would normally help. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll change some of them baits out. We'll switch over from skipjack to shad here in a little bit and see what that does. We'll put shad on the. We'll put shad on those two rods right there, and take the skipjack off there and see what happens. Here in just a little bit, when I feel like it, Lloydies just fishing. What's going on, Lloydies? Let's see. Dude, I went uh, I went bluegill fishing uh, last week, and I caught a ton of big old giant golly whopper bluegill. And uh, I played them cotton picking things up, and Stacia cooked them up. And I made fish sandwiches and ate uh, fish sandwiches for three days at work. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was good. I had. Uh, put the, I got me a hoagie bun, and I put a little bit of mayonnaise on that on that bread, and I put the fish blades on there, and some pickles, and uh, what else did I put on there? Uh, a little bit of lettuce and tomato, and man, that was a good sandwich right there. That that fried bluegill fillets. Oh, what are you talking about? That's good stuff. She goes, what do you want for lunch tomorrow? I said, same thing I had yesterday. <laughs> and I said that two days in a row. Let's see. I might need to check the bait on two of them rods. They got tapped while ago gently. Uh, there are some like, uh, the eels are start moving up in here pretty soon. Um, we'll start catching some of them cotton picking uh, North American eels. Um, it's usually in, uh, right before spring and springtime. The eels move up into these creek channels really, really thick, and you start catching the crap out of them. Boy, there's a lot of people coming up here fishing today. They're sure going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I said, most of them are fishing for stripers and white bass and stuff like that. They're down there slinging them baits and slinging them jigs, and that's what they're after. They're trying to catch those. Uh, cooking them, we'll catch you up later. Okay, Lordies, we'll see you soon, buddy. Coffee been doing good around here. Then all around you. Yep. Well, I was saying, you can get a uh, dude, one of the biggest crappie I ever caught came out of that spillway dam right down there. Um, he was right up against the wall there in the far corner. And I was jigging trying to catch some white bass and a, a daggum slab crappie smoked that jig, man. I ain't caught many of them out of there, though. I've caught a lot of the white bass and stuff like that. But uh, that crappie that day, he was the good one. Oh, said Danny in the dink hole. I don't call it the dink hole. I call it the spillway dam. And uh, most of the people around here call it the spillway dam. And uh, I don't call it that because I've caught, like I said, I caught a 63 pounder out of here last year. And I caught uh, on Jody's show, I caught uh, a couple of 25s and some 30s. And uh, when I was doing the, uh, I fished this spot whenever uh, it was uh, Mark from Catfish and Crappie. He had the March Madness uh, uh, 1v1 deal. Dude, I got a 25-pounder out of here during the March Madness. 
They finished in the final four in that. So, no, I don't call it the Dan Cole. It's called the Spillway Dam. I mean, if you catch a, you catch channel cats out of here anywhere from five to ten pounds, um, that's a good size channel cat, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them dinks. I wouldn't call those dinks, or at least I do. Uh, hold on, what did that say? Danny, if you want to see a comical cast net throw? Look at Randy's page. He got a lot of views on it. <laughs> I will. I'll have to check that out when I get home. I used to, man, when I was first learned how to use a cast net, I would throw bananas. On, I'd make enough. I'd throw enough bananas to make banana split, banana pudding, banana bread. I just banana it all up. Mike Irving, what's going on? Good to see you, brother. One thing's about this spot here is uh, these fish bite on the clock. You can be sitting here forever and nothing, 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 nothing. And then they just might start to start biting. But the cold temperatures last night just knocked the crap out of them. Is it Danny? It's short but funny. I'll definitely check it out, Lisa. I might have been better off to fish in the main river and and just fight the grass today. I don't know. But I just didn't feel like carrying all this crap. I wanted to park somewhere close and do some easy fishing today. Well, it don't get no easier just sitting here watching rods that you ain't got to get up and go get. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's pretty dang easy. Yeah, Rod's fishing adventures. Got to go, Evan. Okay, Rod, thank you for stopping in. Appreciate you, buddy. Is that rod getting a bite or is it just... Man, I am definitely at the wrong freaking angle here, I'm telling you. Oh, that fellow's there throwing them cast nets like crazy. There he goes. Whoosh. That ain't a bad throw. <coughs> there goes my daggum chest again. I'm taking them one prescription meds that's trying to break that fluid loose. Every now and then it gets me to coughing. I'm waiting to see if he pulls up anything out of that net. We're watching. We're watching. Let's see. I've been catching a lot of big old giant buffalo right there. Uh, he got something right there. No, no, I guess he did. Man, look at all them people showing up to go fishing. They sure going to be disappointed. Because <laughs> they ain't biting with the crap. Well, the catfish aren't. Th them guys are probably fishing for white bass, and they'll catch them. Yeah, they'll probably get on some white bass. Good possibility of it. Oh. Hey, Kelly Bullock, what's going on, buddy? Screen getting hard to see again. There we go. And they're diagonal. And then it came to your channel because of Brandon from Outdoors I Supervise. That was a chili for real. Dude, that chili was amazing. And uh, the cotton picking, uh, man, that shrimp scampi he made, I could have ate my weight in that stuff. It was so good. Super Bob, what's going on? Uh, 
it's time changes. The catfish still sleeping. You know what? I didn't think about that. Um, they moved the clocks ahead in there and throwed all the fishing off. I'm watching people down there trying to catch them cotton picking uh, them white bass and stuff. They may be throwing for skipjack too. There's a few skipjack moving up in here. I threw the cast net yesterday and caught three of them, which uh, to me, it's hard to catch a skipjack in a cast net. They're too damn fast. They're just too tack up quick, man. Man, that wind's blowing like crazy now. You know what? We might pack up here. If I do, I'll just stay live. But we may pack up and uh, move over to the river and just throw out like one or two rods. You know what I mean? And not just go crazy with it. We may just go throw out a couple rods over on the main river. Because that won't take long. Oh, let's see. There's popped in after church. Glad to see you live. Makes a smile. Fishing on the bank. Absolutely, Bob. Appreciate you. The Danny sounds like you need some skipjack jigs. I didn't bring my skipjack rod with me. Um, I do need to come over here one day and just kind of fiddle for it. When I get ready to go get after skipjack, I'll go over to uh, I'll go over to Kentucky. Uh, like I said last weekend, uh, Richard Cluck went over there and caught a hundred and forty-seven, and then uh, yesterday. Uh, Jerry Parker and Josh Dunningham went over there. Jerry Parker caught 521. Josh Dunningham caught over 200. So, uh, yeah, them boys that's wearing the skipjack out, they've caught more than anybody else I know or anybody else I've heard of. They definitely, uh, they definitely put the beat down on them skipjack yesterday. Uh, 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 stay alive, stay alive. Ooh, that rod there just jumped. Time is it? We got plenty of time, guys. It's only, uh, it's only 12 after one. If we decide to move over to the river, I'm just going to hang you guys up on the mirror of the truck. And we'll stay live and we'll make a move. It's not that far. It's a pretty short drive. And we may drive over to the river and go ahead and throw a rod out there anyway. You know what I'm saying? Just for the heck of it. But I'm not going to load up a whole bunch of rods on the river because it's just too daggum, uh, it's too hard to fish it right now with that grass. But we could probably throw a couple rods out over there. If y'all want to, we may do that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very impressed with the spotlight this week another good one friend of ours nice looking forward to it kelly absolutely looking forward to it i man, if you guys ain't watched the if you ain't seen them spotlight of the weeks that kelly bullock does those things are cool man he does a great job on those absolutely amazing crap Three beers before three. Yeah, been there and done that. <laughs> Hell, I've been times that I had three beers at 12.04. <laughs> so you can't drink before 12 o'clock. You got to wait till after 12. 12 o'clock, it'd be 12.04, and I'd have three beers now. Oh, catfish dog. Hey, Danny, riding and watching. Well, hey, Tim, appreciate you. I think we're going to sit here for just a little while. Then we'll, uh, we'll keep the live going and, uh, we'll, we'll make a move. Oh, y'all see that fish jump out there? There's a little skipjack pop top of the water. The little skippies are skipping. I hope these people pulling up in here ain't got me blocked in where I can't get out of here. I just don't know.
What time is it? It's 12. We'll give it probably another 15 or 20 minutes here. And, uh, man, we'll go back over to the main river and see if we can't get on something. But, but number one thing, I can get down behind that levee and get out of this cotton picket wind. That's my thing. I want to get out of this cotton picket wind. It wasn't blowing a while ago. All right, let me put my trash in the back of the truck. Because you don't leave it down here. This. There we go. Got it in there that time. Oh. Yeah, I threw it. In the, I missed because the wind caught it. I stole it from the bed of the truck, and the wind blew it right over the truck. I'm like, crap. Let's see here. He's taking 18 pack fishing trips. Crack a beer at 6 a.m. That is. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink very often much anymore. Every now and then, me and my wife will we'll build a fire in the fire pit out behind the house, and we might have a couple drinks. But generally, uh, when we go camping, we'll pull the camper up to uh, uh you'll go like Trail Tier State Park up there around Cape Jar, Missouri, or we'll pull it over to uh, Land Between the Lakes in Kentucky. Or we'll take the camper all the way down to Florida. And we're sitting around the camper and stuff and got fire out there. We'll we'll use oh crap, look at that rod right there. Oh Lost it. He had that rod going. He was on there. I looked up and he was jerking the crap out of it. Yeah, let's go with a. I got some shad that I just caught yesterday. We'll put one of them on there. Good Lord, how much plastic wrap did I put in this? That's what happens when you're not paying attention like a dummy. I looked over and the rod was going down and I got to him. But he come unpinned when I was reeling him in.
Yeah, I was sitting there screwing around talking and looked up and that rod was bent over. <laughs> I screwed it up. He was hammering that thing, boy. Oh, I think we're going to... We need to move where I can get a better angle on this. I'm looking straight at the back of them. I need to be off to the side. Maybe that'll help some. Let's get where we can actually see the cock picking rods, you know what I mean? Let's try that. Hold on. That ain't right. Danny, come on, figure it out. Now, hold on, can we see those rods now? We'll see. But yeah, he had that thing. He had that thing pulled over and was smoking it, dude. He yeah, had that rod gone. Tim Molina, what's going on, buddy? I got to make sure I don't get set up here where I can't get out of this chair long. Oh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, welcome in. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Missy Kennedy talking about all them big fish we've been getting on. Whew, it's going to get better, Missy. Mississippi River starting to get some water back in it. Man, I got a real slack up out of that. That's laying on the bank. Let me see if I can get that slack out of that rod. Wrapped up in a back down bush. I'll be right back. That's better. That's better. I don't know if y'all can see them rods or not. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. That's a little bit better angle on them. We can see them if they get bit. You know what I'm saying? We were sitting directly behind them all ago, and I didn't notice that rod. That first one there, I looked up, and it was pulled down and jerking. And uh, they don't tell how long it was doing that before I noticed it. <laughs> Hell, he might have been pulling on that for 15 minutes, and I didn't even see it. Because I was sitting straight behind the rod. And just really was not paying attention, to be honest with you. Oh, well, there's a, yeah, we should have caught that fish. Oh, Black Betty's getting hit. Yeah, you can actually see them better from this side. You're looking at them from the side instead of straight behind them. I might have been getting by so long and didn't know it. Sit <laughs> here looking at the back of the rods, man. <laughs> there, Jeff Bill. What's up, Jeff? Oh, now boy sitting down there on that dam with his legs hanging over it. Two of them. I really don't think you're supposed to do that. I think they got a sign up there that says that's illegal, but uh, they're pretty lenient around here. Josh Thompson. Let's see. You need a bell on the tip. Man, I'm as deaf as a deaf can get. You could put a you could put a cowbell on there and I wouldn't hear it. <clears throat> that took a long time for that fish to bite. But... So, oh, Betty just got bumped. Just have to keep an eye on. See, we'll give it a little bit longer here. They may be fixing to start up. 
I don't know. They may be fixing fire up on us. You get distracted easy? Yeah. Well, generally, I mean, uh, if if I was, if I'm sitting off to the side, um, I got pretty good peripheral vision. And generally, I could be just like screwing around talking and not paying attention. And I could see those rods out of the corner of my eye when, when I'm bends down like that. It generally gets my attention pretty quick. But we're sitting directly behind them. So when he pulled it straight down, I just didn't notice it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, we're just out here just chatting and catting, catting and chatting. The whole point of the day is just uh, we're just going to sit on the bank and relax, man, and just throw out some rods and give you guys a place to hang out and talk. I'll crack a couple dumb comments every now and then. <laughs> a lot of them people down there are giving up. I don't know, maybe the striper stopped biting or the white bass or whatever. I just wish that wind to quit. Dad, gum it, man. It's killing me. I did not sign up for this wind. Ugh. What kind of line are you running on those poles? I am running. Uh, on the spinning rods, that is 80 pound braid on there. That one's got 80 pound braid. That one's got 80 pound braid. That one's got 80 pound braid. Now, the two bait casting rods, they have a uh, uh, 40 pound mono on them. What the hell is that up my sleeve biting a snot out of me? Oh, man, get that out of there. I mean, something just bit the dickens out of me. Oh, that's a freaking spider. Get out of my sleeve, you idiot. Oh, God, that thing hurt. Stupid spider. That ain't no brown recluse, so I ain't worried about it. Oh, let's see, 922. And Jay just waking up from a nap. Nap sounds good right now. If this wind wasn't blowing and it's just the sun shining on me, yeah, I could lay here and stretch out and take a nice nap. It'd be wonderful, I promise you. Be wonderful. They call me Mr. Wonderful. Oh, let's see here. I'm not sure if that's a bite down there or not. Might be getting a little nibble. Man, I don't know what's going on. I've just been getting chilled real easy lately. Just the slightest breeze or the slightest drop in temperature. And, and I get cold and can't get warm. I don't know what's up with that. I know I just don't like it, though. Super Bob's, I don't want to catch an 80 pounder. Five to 10 is plenty. You know, I, I like catching big ones when they come along. But, uh, man, I, I have my most fun uh, whenever you're uh, just out, in, you know, in the, and like you're saying, man, eight, 10 or eight to 10 pound fish. And when they're just biting constantly and you're getting to hook a lot of them and reel them in, um, man, that's to me, that's some of the most fun you can have. You know, when you're catching a whole bunch of them and, and they're biting real good. And you're getting to jump up and reel the rod in and throw them out there and then reel them up and then throw them out there and just keep on catching and catching and catching. I, I like them days like that where it's just fun just catching fish. You know what I'm saying? But I'd be lying if I didn't say it didn't feel good every now and then when you uh, get one on there that, uh, that makes you do a little workout. You know what I'm saying? It puts a little something, something on you and makes you work for it. Those are fun for sure. Well, those are exciting. You know what? And get your blood pumped up and your heart racing. 
But as far as just having fun, yeah. Uh, man, I like the eight to ten pounders that are just biting as fast as you can hook them. That to me is the fun day. That water ain't very freaking deep out there. It's just not very deep at all. See that? Uh, we, we're sitting there talking about moving and going to the main river. And as soon as I start talking about that, that fish bit and bent that rod down. It, the only reason they did that is to keep me from moving. Hold, Betty just got a little bump on her. She got thumped. Oh. oh, there's a hit. There's a hit. He's dropping slack. He's dropping slack. He dropped slack all the way to the bank, guys. Let's go pull that slack up. He's still dropping Step on that bridge, Lord, yeah. There you go, there you go. There he is. There he is. Is there. <laughs> a freaking bow fin. God, I hate these fights. Not a catfish. Let me get my fish grip because I ain't sticking my fingers in his mouth. Yeah, I hate these dang things <laughs> with a passion.
Oh, I guarantee you this. I guarantee it's what we had on there a while ago, too. So, these dang things have moved up in here. That thing will light you up. Well, once they start moving up in here, they'll run everything else out of you. I hate these things. Well, I guarantee you that's what we hooked up on a while ago, too. There it is. He's six point three one pounds. Six point three one. I don't like him, but I'm not gonna hurt him. I'm gonna let him go. Oh, yeah, it's fun catching him anyway, though. You got to reel something in. But yeah, I don't particularly care for those things too much. But today we're out here just to do some fishing. We're not worried about what we catch or how big it is or how small it is or even what it is. It's about relaxing on Sunday. Hanging out with our friends and just enjoying the day. But I guarantee you, that fish that we hooked earlier that got off, I guarantee you that's what it was. Because once them bow fins move up in here, they are up in here thick. I mean, they're just everywhere. But we'll throw this rod back out and we'll give it a little bit longer. And, uh, if we don't get on something better, we'll uh we'll keep the live going, and uh we'll we'll make a short run and run over to the main river, and see if we can't get on some catfish. You know what I'm saying? Let me get this rod back out here. You know what? I tell you what I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna change the reel out on this rod because that reel sucks, but it it, it it's sticking and hanging up. And I've got a reel that I got from Michael Murillo that I'm going to put on here and, and switch it out. It won't take long. I can do it real quick right here on the bank. So I'm going to switch that reel out.
Huh. Sorry that took so long. But I've got I've got this reel right here that I got from Michael Marillo. All spooled up and ready to go. I'm going to put it in there. Hold on. What did I miss? Uh, Keith Rock, Doc Reed, number for one month. Thank you, Dick. Keith, I appreciate it. But, yeah. We're going to switch this out real quick. Because uh, I've got a couple of these that I got from Michael Marillo. And they are really good reels, man. They're smooth. They work great. They got the bait runner on them. But we're going to take this old Walmart reel off here and put this on there and see if it don't work a little bit better. And uh, it won't take me a second here. Just hang on. I'm going to put this on here. If I can figure out what the crap I'm doing here. What in the world? I've hooked my dang gum hat. There we go. There we go. Get that line off there. We'll just keep an eye on these other rods while we're doing this. So we're still fishing. We're just going to make a few changes here real quick. All right, lay that reel to the side. Let's get this handy dandy awesome Michael Marillo reel out. We're going to fit it up on there. If I can do this without making a mess. That line wrapped all around me. Let's go ahead and put this one on there. This is a way bigger reel, too. I like it a lot better. That Walmart, I got it. It's a contender. Um, they're not bad for a cheap reel, but they're cheap reels. And it sticks a little bit every now and then. That's pretty solid. This is a much better reel here, though. And a lot of times I carry spare reels and stuff when I go fishing. And uh, you know, if you get one that tears up, it, it don't take that long to swap them out right here on the bank or on the boat or wherever you're at. It's uh, not that if you got them spooled up and ready to go. It's not that big a deal to swap them out real quick. It don't take hardly no effort at all. Just these rods here are so freaking long, you gotta fish them down. <laughs> Push them down. Good Lord, am I gonna make it to the end of it? I like that that black reel on this black rod it looks better anyway it's pretty it's pretty 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 now we'll just reuse our rig that we had on that rod the sun tangles here there we go and we'll tie this back on bait it up and throw it back out Just like that. You've got a brand new reel on there, all spooled up. And this one here, oh yeah, that's way smoother. That's much better. Much better. 
All right, let's get a piece of bait on there. Sling her back out there. Nice little chunk of shad. Oh, yeah, that feels so much better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is way better. All right, let's give it about another 15 or 20 minutes here. And uh, if you guys want, we'll jump in the truck and we'll ride over to the Mississippi River and throw out the I don't know, we'll throw out about three rods, I guess, and see if we can't get on something a little better because uh, the both in have moved up in here, and I just don't care for them. All right, let's see here. How much did I miss? Uh, they gone. Let's see here. Stitches. Oh, yeah, you got your stitches in. I forgot about that. Drop out a little four times, broke my phone mount, still had fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to give it a little bit longer here. And then we're going to move to the, we're going to move over to the main river and go fish that a little bit and get out of this wind. Well, I'd rather fight the grass and have this wind blowing on me, too. What the crap? Dude, no wonder that reel was screwing up. It was falling apart. What in the world? That's why that reel was acting all weird. There. That gun thing was coming apart. Oh, we definitely got something wrong there. There's something broken there. Look at this. Something broke. So it's a good thing we carried that spare reel with us, you know it? I tightened that up and we got something wrong there. But that's all right. We, like I said, we carry spare reels with us on the truck, and when we need them, we throw them on there. But yeah, I'm glad we didn't hook on something big. Look at there, it just pulled apart. Oh, that pin broke in there. Look at that. Or it fell out. I just pulled that whole thing right out of there. But that pin that holds that in there fell out of there, apparently. I can fix that. I'm not going to do it on the bank. I'll do it when I get home. But yeah. Man, it's a good thing we changed that out before we hook something big. You know what I'm saying? Always carry you some spare gear with you.
That's down in the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Down in the bushes. They're getting you on the hide. Yeah, we ain't going to spend much more time here. We're going to pack up and make a move. I'm going to take you guys with me. Don't worry. But we're going we're gonna to go to the Mississippi River, see if we can't get on something a little better. Let's see. Yeah, the pin on the drive gear broke. It did. I, I heard something crunch when I was reeling that in. But you know what? Thank God we didn't hook up on a big giant fish on that rod with that reel on there because that would have really ticked me off. Yeah, that white pole moving, that's probably the wind. But we're fixing to move and get out of this wind. We're going to go to the river. You guys going to go fish some big water and get out of this little bit old dink old pinky. Little bit old full of crap fish hole. I got a bunch of bowfin up in here. Like I said, I know a spot where we can go and get out of this wind. And we're definitely going to go do that. Yeah, if I ain't catching something, I'm breaking something. Hey, man, I got to live up to my reputation. Can you believe we reeled that both in on that busted ass reel? <laughs> How you like that? We reeled that fish in on a broken reel. That's <laughs> something else, ain't it? <clears throat> I'm about ready to move. Like I said, we ain't going to shut the live down. We'll just, uh, because it won't take that long for me to move. And you guys can keep hanging out and talking. And you can watch me get set up and everything else. It'll be all right. Got plenty of time this afternoon. There's no rush. We ain't no hurry. We ain't fishing no tournament. We ain't trying to beat nobody. We're just hanging out and having a good time. So we can do a little fishing, we can do a little driving, and we do some more fishing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to it, but to do it. J.G. Hill. Yeah, I'm sick of this wind. I'm getting cold. I've got to get out of it. We're going to do it here in a little bit. We'll leave them rods sitting down. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna reel those three up first. And let's go ahead and start getting stuff packed in the truck, and then we'll make our move. What do you say? 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 Do you say? I think we're gonna do it. Let me carry up the net and the. Uh, and the uh, what is that thing? Bait bucket. Yeah. You guys keep an eye on them rods. I'm going to start packing stuff up so we can go to some real fishing spots.
You see what that 80 pound fish did to my net the other night? He he broke my freaking net, man. <laughs> We didn't have nothing left but a piece of skin on that hook. Something was biting on it, didn't even know it. Oh, some of them boys is in panic mode over there. My buddy, the game warden, just showed up. I guarantee you somebody's getting a ticket over there today. You can bet on it. I think it's old Christopher Barnes, the game warden, I think. I think that's Chris. But that one guy started cussing as soon as he seen the game warden pulled up, so I know he ain't legal. Oh, well. Anything happens to you like that, can't blame nobody but yourself. I don't see how people can afford to pay that 200 something dollar fine, but they can't buy a $12 fishing license.
He's over getting on to the boys for sitting on that dam. Their signs up. It says no trespassing and all this other crap. You're not supposed to sit on that dam, and that's where they're at. So they're learning a hard lesson right now. Boy, you think it ain't muddy getting back here? Look at them tires. That gumbo mud all over them. It is not fun getting back here. Gumbo mud all over them tires. We're going to sling the crap out of that when we get... My wife hates that. She goes, you got that truck so junked up with all that fishing stuff. Ain't no room to even sit in the back seat. My, that's why it's my truck and not your car. You know what I'm saying? We're about your own vehicle, Miss Prissy. Uh, don't worry about what I do. We're about your own stuff. All right. Need this tripod in here. Now let's head to the river, y'all. It won't take long. We'll be there pretty quick. Actually, that spot right there is a better spot to fish. But I don't want to bust my butt walking in that mud right there. See, that game warden ain't going to check me because uh, he's already checked me this year. He knows who I am. He even subscribes to my channel. Turn that crap down, dude. Oh. But, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. When, when, uh, the game warden subscribed to my channel. 
I thought, man, that's cool. But uh, when you got a game warden subscribe to your channel, you dang sure better not do nothing illegal because he's watching you all the time. <laughs> All right, we got some really muddy spots up here that uh, we're going to have to get going to get through it, you guys. It's going to be sketchy. So if you guys get shook around a little bit, don't go into panic mode. Right here's where we almost got stuck while ago. Hang on. Here we go. Right on, right on. Right through it. Nothing left to do it, but do it. That's a slick spot. Oh my God. And we got a hard left turn here that's all mud. So, y'all hang on. I'm fixing the gun. Here we go. Oh, we are out of here. Just like that. Now we can take her out of four-wheel drive. And we're going to slink some mud on the highway. All right, there we go. Much better. Get a little mud on the tires. Let me turn that heat off. Ugh. All right, this won't take long, you guys. We're heading to the Mississippi River. I hope nobody's sitting in our spot. But if they are, we'll just move to a different one because there's plenty of them. There's enough room for everybody. Let's go fish the main river. We're probably going to get caught. We're going to be fighting a whole lot of grass. But uh, I know last night the bite wasn't that good. So let's go see what it's like during the daytime. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Let's do it. Speed limit on this levy is 20 miles an hour. Better slow this thing down. <laughs> yeah, we're going a little too quick. We've got to slow down. We're doing 25. I think that's acceptable, don't you? I like go down right there and go back there fishing. But there's some buttholes that's rutted that whole road up where you can't get back down there. And they do it on purpose, too. They go down there with big trucks with big tires and they rut big, deep holes where nobody else can get back there because they're selfish and inconsiderate. And that's just what they do. I know who they are. All right, is anybody in the spot? Let's see. Oh, there's a car where we was going to fish at, but we're going to move down to a different spot. That's all right. That's all right. We was going to fish right there, but we will move on around. There's plenty of room. We just got to go back and four-wheel drive again. Again. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm not going through that crap. I'm cutting through here. I'm not going through that down there. Yes, I got four-wheel drive, and yes, I can make it through it, but there's no point in doing it if you don't have to. Not when you get a, a shot at a better road, you know what I'm saying? Mm, some lady out here walking her dogs. Isn't that special? Oh, that's some fellers that was fishing up here down from us last night. I know who them guys are. 
All right, let's pull up here, and we're going to pick out a spot. We're driving off into the Dang River. What do you say? This don't look bad. Let's get out and take a look. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, God. Too old for this crap. We can get down there. Yeah. We'll fish right behind this barge right here. Boy, that's some fast current, too. This is going to be... Yeah. This is going to be fun. Let me get you guys set up, and I'll start carrying stuff down. I told you it wasn't going to take long. Man, i got to clean this truck out. My wife is getting really pissy about it. <laughs> I'm going to take you guys down here first. Oh, God. I hate the freaking hills. The hills are alive with the sound of catfish. Yeah, that old boy set up down there where I caught that 88 pounder right there. That's where he's at. Okay. I say we're going to throw one line out right behind that barge. We're only going to throw about three or four rods, guys. We'll see. Let me get you set up here. Hold on. Get you locked into the tripod. So that you're nice and secure and safe and sound. Ooh, I almost hit the end button. Am I still here? Man. How do I get that offer? Am I still here? I hope I put my thumb on the end of the button. Hello, 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 hello. Did I end the freaking stream? I'm gonna refresh, guys. Hang on. Can't see nothing. Okay. I accidentally hit that uh, that button that says in stream and now down the bottom there it says in. So I gotta be careful not to hit that again. If I do, it's gonna end it. Let me find a nice level spot for you guys right here. That don't look too bad. You guys comfortable there? Y'all okay? Is that all right? Uh, and there's a just in case people's I don't hide where I fish at I'm not a greedy person I share spots with people I tell them where they're at that's the observation deck right there and the, you go over the levee that's the city of New Madrid so now do you know where I'm at if I catch anything Danny don't care Danny does not care I'm not one of the people that go oh my god He's in my spot. I got my spots, but you know what? My spots are everybody's spots, and I share them with everybody. Quit being an a-hole about it. You know what I'm saying? I've I fished this river. I'm, I'm 58 years old. I've been fishing this river since I was 16. Oh, man, that carp just jumped clean out the water. <laughs> but I've got guys that's come up, come along, and said, this is my spot. I've been fishing here for two years. I'm like, well, bless your heart. <laughs> I was fishing them before you was born. I'm going to go get some fishing rods and stop bullcrapping. Let's get some lines in the water.
Jeez, that won me up. We just brought down the We just brought down the bare necessities For the bare necessities That's how a bear can rest at ease Forget about your worries and your strife Yeah, baby Whew. I'm out of breath Oh, Telly, what's up, sister? Oh, my God Okay Let's get to work. Let's get some rods in the water. We ain't playing now, y'all. That ain't no joke. Probably going to be a lot of trash in the water, but we got a better chance of catching bigger fish. Let's get something going. Got the ADOT River Cats tackle crimson red hook on that baby.
Now, guys, here's the dealio. All right. If you look and see, you see how that bank drops off like that right there? There's about 10 more times that it does that. You see that deep, steep drop? There's about 10 more times that it does that right out as you go out. So we're throwing out really close to the bank, and we're letting them rods swing down, and they're going to land right on one of them ledges like that. So we're not throwing out real far, which is kind of a – it goes against everything we ever do with the big rods. But you know what? It's going to be our best chance at catching a big catfish. Uh, fishing in this spot when the conditions are like this has worked for me. Man, you wouldn't believe how many times I've caught big fish just right off the shoreline. Just so you've got an idea of what we're up against, that's the grass from last night fishing here. That's what we're going to be dealing with. Bingo. I'm bleeding. Who cares?
One more time. One more time. And last but not least, old Black Betty. Bamba Lamba. Bamba Lamba. Whoa, Black Betty. Bamba Lamb. Whoa, Black Betty. Let's go, girl. Got our Muskrat Adventures towel that I. Stole a uh, borrowed from Coda. It's upside down. Muskrat, muskrat love. Got couple bars all in it. Alright, it's almost time for the relaxing part, guys. We're going to get right behind that barge. Boom. There we go. Now, we just... uh. We just chunked Black Betty out right behind that barge. She's right behind it. I may have to scoot back a little further for you guys to see all those rods. Uh, it's kind of. Let me see if I can scoot back just a little bit. Let's see if this helps me. Let's get somewhere nice and comfortable. Let me see. Is that gonna work? There we go. Let's see. I think that'll be okay. All right. I think we can see everything there. Yeah, that'll work. We got the big girls out today. I like big rods, and I cannot lie. The big girls is fishing today. All right, now let's see here. Where are we at? I'm almost caught up, guys. I'm not going to try to back tack a whole bunch. Let's see here. Uh, saw you talking about cleaning. I fish Piedmont a few times. Cleaning. I'm right, trying to get hook up. Oh. There's Jerry Parker. Oh, Parker Pursuits. Lisa Elliott. Who the hell let Parker in here? <laughs> we are fishing close to the shoreline. Let me do this. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. I got go. I forgot the battery pack for the phone for the camera. Should we say? Man, it is hot here. I got all that wind now. The sun's just cooking me. Let's see if we can't get on fish here. We're kind of a, in, like I said, in close to the shore. We're trying to avoid as much grass as we can. 
we're trying to fish right along those drop off uh, ledges. And uh, what was the other point I was trying to make? Oh, and we're trying to stay right at the edge of that main current seam. So you're getting three things at once there. Unfortunately, didn't get fired on video. Welcome to the club, buddy. You know, me and old Barry, me and old Jerry Parker's just alike. We catch big fish and forget to turn the camera on. Dad, damn it. Welcome to my world, Parker. It's going to suck for a while. <laughs> yep. You'll, you'll lay awake at night. Just taunted by your mistake. It still it haunts me in my dreams. It is what it is. Is Cujo in here? Chris Everett, happy birthday, Jerry, and congrats on your cat. I think that's a new PB for you, isn't it, Parker? So look at this, look at this. Me and Jerry Parker got our PBs uh, like eight days apart. Yeah, within just a, a, a just a hair over a week's time apart. Now all we got to do is get Richard Cluck's butt out here and get on this water. When do you get Richard back on the water? Hooks and hammocks, driving and listening. Everybody congratulating Parker. Good job, Jerry. Man, that's what I'm talking about. River rats, river Mississippi river rats using the river rats cat cat tackle. River cats tackle. You know, my wife says it's hard to say. River rats, river cats. It sounds similar, don't it? We got the river rats with the river cats tackle, throwing out the hooks and catching them big old monsters. Catching them monsters. What's my phone on? 82%. I like to keep it above 80. So I'm going to run up to the truck. You guys watch these rods for me, will you? I'm going to run up the truck and grab my battery, battery pack. And go ahead on and just plug it in. What do you say? What do you say? Yeah, I accidentally hit the end button a while ago, and you got to tap it twice. Say that five times real fast. I I can't. Mississippi River Rats River Cats tackle. 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 Hey, I guess I can. <laughs> Who that going there? Who that going there? Boy, how cool would that be if that was Richard Cluck? I'd love to see Richard out on the water today. I don't think that's Richard. I'm looking at the boat. I just don't believe it is. No, I don't think so. No, I think that thing's got a full windshield on it. I'm pretty sure it does. Which wouldn't be, would not be, would, 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 would not be Richard. No, I ain't Richard. That thing's got a full front windshield on it. Trust me, Richard ain't got no windshield. I rode in that boat. It's cold as hell. <laughs> ain't nothing to hide behind. We just got the rods throughout, Cindy. We'll see if we can't get on something. We're short stroking it with long rods. <laughs> We're barely throwing them out there. We got the longest rods we got, and we're just barely chunking them out there, real close to the shoreline. We're trying to work this. Uh, what it is is right behind this barge right here. When they pull it up here and anchor it, they fire that motor up on that barge, on that on that tugboat, and they rev that engine and they try to hold that barge in one spot. And when they do, they dig a deep old hole right about there. And that's what we're throwing into. We're throwing in that hole with them first two rods right there. Them other three rods, we threw them out there a little ways. And there's a ledge that runs just like that one right there. 
there's a ledge that runs along the bank. As a matter of fact, there's three or four of them. And we're letting those three rods hit on each ledge. We actually threw that one out really close to the bank, the furthest rod, so it caught the first ledge. We threw the second rod out a little bit further, so it caught the second ledge. We threw the third rod out just a little bit, what, further? That's what I said. You heard me. So guess what it did? It caught the third ledge. So we're fishing one, two, three ledges and on the three rods furthest away. And then we've got one, two poles in the deep hole that is dug by the tugboat when it's holding that barge in its place while they tie it up. So there you go. Now you know as much as me. Man, it's freaking hot down here now. I'm freezing to death in the wind, and I'm burning up in the sun. I can't catch a break. All right, you guys. I'm going to run up and grab a Mountain Dew and my battery pack. I'm seriously, I'm going this time. I'll be right back. All I got to do is go right there. I'll be right back. I may turn the truck around so I can see the ass end of it so nobody steals the stuff out of it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You guys watch them rods. See if anything happens. All right, we're almost set here, folks. Just to hang on a minute. Let's get that put there. I gotta be careful not to hit that end button. If I hit it again, it's done. There we go. I need to turn that back. Oh crap, I just pulled my cotton picking tripod apart. There we go. I'll pop it back together. I put too much muscle on it's what it was get in there stupid battery now right, now we're all set we can finish the day out relaxing chillaxing and watching these rods you guys so we got an extra hour of daylight today you guys can come and go as you please hang out have fun we enjoy having you here josh thompson the sea think he has black betty right by the barge you, sir, would be correct. The very first rod you see there is Black Betty. The next rod you see, that's the J-Dog rod. That's White Lightning. That is also the rod, that white rod, White Lightning. That is the rod that caught my 88.82 pound new PB right there. Next to that, we've got the Jody rod, which is the identical twin sister to Black Betty. After that, we got the 13-foot Sunbeam rod. That's called Sunny. And after that, We've got the Mad Cat's Bolt, which is also known as the Lisa Elliott Rod. That's Little Miss Lisa down there on the end. She's on that first levee, that ledge right there, trying to see if she can't pull something out of there. So there you go. I've introduced you to the family. Let's watch them and see if they can do anything for us today. Come on, ladies. The people are watching you. You know what? It, it no matter if they catch fish or not. 
them right there's my girls. And they do all they can to do their best for me. So I'm proud of each and every one of them. I love them to death. And they just ain't going to do no wrong by me. You go, ladies. Ain't that beautiful? I like them big old girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Oh. <laughs> and that's not even close. The guys, I mean, if you look up there in a the truck, there's about 20 more rods sticking out of the truck. <laughs> I got fishing poles sticking out of the bed of that truck left and right, man. I mean, they're everywhere. But, you know, we, we, we kind of rotate. We try to let, let everybody have a turn. You know, of course, Black Betty, she's going to fish every day that I can fish with her. And, you know, Lisa, the Lisa Rod, she fishes a lot with me. But we kind of rotated out with the other ones with the Uncle Lou's and the and the uh, Muddy River Rod and all that. And, and uh, we, we try to keep it as even as possible. But uh, when the river is like this, you pretty much got to break out the big girls. You got to turn them loose. You got to let them do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're short casting on them ledges, because them long rods, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something, okay? Pay attention to me here. I'm going to learn you something. Now, if you've got uh, uh, some debris or say you got ledges that drop off, okay? Just follow me here. If it goes out under the water and a ledge drops off. And it goes out and it drops off. And it goes out and it drops off. Okay. Now on a shorter rod, God bless their heart, there's nothing wrong with them. Seven foot six rod ain't a dang thing wrong with it. They're great rods, all of them. But with a long rod, okay, when you've got that rod way up here. You see, are you following me so far? Now, if those ledges are like this, okay, and you got a short rod, it's down here. When you hook that fish, that line is slicing into that ledge. And you've got a try to fight that fish up over that ledge because the line will cut into that ledge and that's where you lose a lot of those fish and and when you're reeling them with no fish on your your line will cut into that ledge and it'll break your sinker off on a breakaway rig now with these long rods you see how far that's sticking out there i can lift that up real high okay are you following me and i can lift it straight up over them ledges real real fast and get them up and get it out of there same thing with a fish. I can keep pressure on that fish, okay, with that long tip out there. I can get him to come up up and over that ledge versus a shorter rod, which would be about that long. I'm cutting right into that ledge with that fish. Make sense to you? Okay, well, there's reason to rhyme for everything I do. It's not always right, but it's what I've come up with. You know what I'm saying? Shelby named the rod. She caught her PV 50.6 on Big Red. Way to go, Shelby. That's one problem. Man, you people that don't name your rods are just doing them an injustice. If that rod went out there and it caught you the best fish you've ever caught, and you don't pay no respects to that fishing pole and give it a name, make it proper, give it a proper name. You don't want no bastard rods running around here. They need a proper name. <laughs> <laughs> it's all these illegitimate rods. What's his name? I don't know. We found him on the street and adopted him. <laughs> <laughs> this one here was in a dumpster behind the pizza hut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to hell. <laughs> all right. Let's just chill out and have fun, guys. What do you say? Who is that? Who is that? Oh, my goodness. There she is. Hey there, Jody girl. My Jody girl. The one who catches the fish. With James Day around. Oh, I bet y'all thought I shut up for a minute. I was take a drink of Mountain Dew. If I could figure out how to talk and drink soda at the same time, y'all guys would be in trouble. 
All right, Neil. I know there's some big catfish out here in this spot right here. The bite was absolutely terrible last night. Y'all, we caught one freaking channel cat that weighed 5.9 pounds. And we reeled in enough grass to, to resaw the field. <laughs> oh. But it's okay. It's Sunday, man. Let's just relax. Be thankful for uh, being able to do what we do. And while we're doing that, let's throw out a couple fishing poles and hang out with each other and just enjoy ourselves, enjoy each other's company. You know what I mean? Love y'all to death. You guys are awesome. And you know what? I'll tell you one of the things I'm most thankful for, for having you guys here on YouTube and having this camera. Because I used to sit out here without the camera and talk to myself just like this, and people thought I was freaking nuts. <laughs> At least now I got a camera. and. You know, there's been times I come out here and didn't even turn the camera on. I just sit here talking. And they think that I'm on YouTube, but I'm really not. <laughs> well, I just realized something. You see that cable right there? That cable? That cable runs right underneath my chair and it's tied to that barge <laughs> if, that, if that barge breaks loose this cable's gonna shoot my ass out the river like a slingshot <laughs> oh it sold us good not good for you it's just good oh yeah Mm hmm I'm gonna drop a link if anybody wants to come up. Let's do it, let's do it. Bingo, bango, bongo. There we go. Oh well at least the current's not ripping my lines out of the water like it was last night. That means the grass has settled down a little bit, I hope. We may actually, uh, uh, here in a little bit, throw the rod out just a little bit further, just a little bit further, and see if uh, the fish might be out there a little bit deeper out. I don't know. Uh, oh, excuse me, that mountain dude just came riding up my throat. <laughs> Oh, 63 people watching in here on YouTube. 12 on Facebook. Appreciate y'all. Love you to death. Are we going to catch a fish today? Are we going to catch a fish? Hey, we didn't scuff today. We caught a griddle, a bowfin, a dogfish, a cypress bass, whatever you want to call it from where part of the country you're from. It has a different name. I call them finger biting, bait stealing sons of them. <laughs> I will not finish that. Come on, girls. Let's see a little action. A little action. A little bit of bump, bump, bumpity bump on the rods. Let's get it. Oh, oh, Betty. Betty got a little ticky tack going on there. Come on, Betty. That was a little tippy, tippy tap. Come on, girl. There's something interesting in what she's got going on. Betty, can you do it today? Girl, can you do it today? That was our first little bite since we got here. He tapped on it a little bit right there. That kind of got my heart pumping just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. Maybe. That shows me that there's a fish down there that might be interested in that bait. Question is, is he interested enough to take a big old whomping, chonking bite out of it? He just barely tickled that rod. So we may be we may be throwing into some channel cat spots here. I hope not. Well, you know what? 
it's Sunday. I don't care. Go on and buy it if you want to, Channel Cat. Just go on and get it if you want to. I don't care. Just be a 20-pound Channel Cat. I want my PB Channel Cat today. That's what we're going to do. Let's go for a 20-pound Channel Cat. All you got to do is, because my PB on Channel Cat is 19 and three-quarter pounds. And uh, where did I catch that at? Oh, he was way around the river, around that bend on the other, going upstream. That's where he come from. Man, I'm going to have to come out of this thermal shark now. It's getting warm. Don't worry. When I get ready to take this shirt off, I'll do it behind the camera. I'm not going to go up there and do it. But, um, da 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 I will spare you that. <laughs> Ooh, Lord have mercy. Boy, it would be nice to see one of them rods just go down like crazy. I ain't going to lie. I sure like to see it. It'd be a beautiful sight. Beautiful sight. And I got the... Here's the thing. Turn this dang camera on, and it's a curse. I'm telling you, it's a curse. I can almost bet you if I turn this camera off, 30 seconds later, one of those rods would bend over and almost pull out of the rod holder. I don't get it, and I don't like it a bit. I don't like it one bit. I don't. Going back, someone said, fishing is stressful. We'll be a bait and tackle store and have no bait. Oh, well, be a bait and tackle. What? Josh Thompson, you got no bait? Hey, I'm going to send you Jerry Parker's personal phone number, and I promise you, Jerry Parker's got some bait. You know what? We need to make it. You know what? Me and Parker and Richard Cluck need to make a run over to Kentucky, and we need to just spend a day <clears throat> and load up some coolers, and then you figure out. Uh, we'll figure out a, a, a route where you meet us halfway, and we'll load your butt up. We just need to do that. That's what we need to do to help our buddy Josh Thompson out. Can skip Jack and Chad. But we can get you Skip Jack real easy. I mean, the Skip Jack are running pretty good right now, and they're easy to catch. Anybody can catch them over there. Any fool can load up a cooler. It's not hard. It's bait fishing. But uh, the Shad, we can get a few gizzard Shad in a net, but there's not a lot of them. But if you wanted some uh, uh, of those big head carp or silver carp, Man, I can snag you a thousand pounds of them in about four hours. <laughs> you can play all of them you want. We got to do a snagging show this year. I forgot about that. We're definitely going to have to get on that. We'll, we'll do a, we'll do one episode where we just, you know, we might throw some catfish rods out in the background. We've done it before. And it was fun. You guys enjoyed it. I think you did. You said you did, unless you lied to me, trying to make me feel better about myself because you didn't want me to be all, uh, uh, like, have an inferiority complex or anything like that. <laughs> I, I don't give a rat's butt. <laughs> oh, man. It'll be all right. Silver Carp love to vacuum seal them and sell them. Dude, they are unlimited here. I'm telling you, I, I could probably, if I had a snagging hook with me right now, I guarantee you I could throw right out there and start reeling in and jerking that rod as fast as I can, and I'll catch one on just almost every freaking throw. They are so cotton-picking thick. It's, it's just unbelievable. Let's see, Calico 916. What's up, Calico King? I was trying to get that pronounced right. I was going Calico. Calico, Calico, Calico. It's Cali King. So Betty got one little old tap while ago, and then he just left it. 
Now, that's the freshest shad I got. I just caught them day before yesterday. I've got some old skipjack in there I've had for almost, what, eight months? No, it ain't been that long. Probably six months. I need to be using them stinking things up and getting rid of them. What the hell is that? Shad Daddy, what's going on? Good to see you, brother. Can we get a fish on the line? Well, hold on there. White lightning just got bumped. Got a little tap. Oh, that rod down there just got a little tap. I bet we're in a, uh, it's either a big school of little bitty, 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 bitty blue cats or a cotton pick a bunch of channel cats has moved up along this ledge right here. See, we're doing the, hey, Travis, how you doing, buddy? Good to see ya. Um, we're not trying to, uh, here's the tactic we got going on today. You, you know, I've been doing it for years, but, but, uh, Roger from Muskrat Adventures, that would be, uh, hang on a second. Uh, I'll get that out of my belly. Oh my God. That hurts. That would be uh, this guy right here, Moosegrat, the Moosegrat. Um, he talks about it quite a bit, about uh, using swing rods <clears throat> and the ledges down through there. They're, they are travel corridors for these catfish. They hug that ledge and swim along it. And if the fish are laid up on the bottom and not moving much, if there's any chance that they're going to be moving, most of the time they're going to be moving along that ledge. So if you can uh, swing your rods out there and let them float down and drift up against that ledge, you're on the catfish highway. And if they travel through there, they pretty much got to pass your bait. And if they're going to eat it, they'll eat it. If they don't, they don't. What am I going to do with an extra hour of daylight today? This is going to be something, I'm telling you right now. We got plenty of time for these fish to bite. All we got to do is be patient. Caught your PB32 pounder flathead on your old red fin froze in a sandwich baggie. <laughs> hey, dude, man, uh, you know, old bait's better than no bait. And sometimes, you know, you just never know what they want to eat. Uh, some, uh, I mean, majority of the time, we all agree. They want fresh bait. That's what they want. But don't think they won't eat some old stanky, rotten, nasty. Dude, I've used zombie carp and caught monsters on it. I've had carp that I laid out on the bank for a month in the wintertime, and it didn't rot because it was so cold. But, uh, I mean, I've, I've done it on video. I've proved it. I mean, it's not just something I'm making up. That, uh, and people go, oh, really? Well, can you prove it? Hell, yeah, I can prove it. Go watch the video. I'll show you. Man, I was known for zombie carp for a long time. I, there's a couple things I've done that it took me forever to get away from them, man. It kind of stuck to my name, and I was like, really? I don't want that. <laughs> I've done some I've done some really cool stuff, and I've done some really stupid stuff, but I look back in hindsight going, ooh, probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> But it was funny in the moment, so I didn't mind so much. It wasn't bothering me a bit. Yeah, it'll be us. Hit that like and share, everyone. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know, honestly, uh, I got that real skinny 13-foot rod down there, that sunbeam. And that thing is like a whip. I mean, it's flexible. It's all get out. I would love to hook up on something 30 pounds or bigger on that rod just to see how it would handle it. I'd love to get something big on that rod and see what it'll do. That would be awesome. I'd love it. Hey, there's Mark Kratz, my army buddy, my brother. That guy right there, we've been through hell and high water together. Our last duty station was together in Fort Ord, California. 
And uh, me and Mark, we stomped through the jungles of Central America. We've done all kinds of cool stuff. So Mark Kratz, man, brother, I love you, brother. Absolutely. Wolfhounds for life, man. Boom, right there. 7th Infantry Division. 7th Infantry Division Wolfhounds, baby. And that guy's the real deal right there, Mark Kratz, man. He give you shirt off his back and, and take a bullet for you. I know that for a fact. Let's see. No way I'd use a 13-foot rod. Well, how about a 16-footer? <laughs> <laughs> we got them all, baby. We got them all. I've actually got, uh, it's in the works of, uh, we're going to be getting some, uh, we're going to be getting some 14 foot rods in pretty soon. Anything besides 13. Why? 13's my lucky number, man. I love 13. 13 is my lucky number. Uh, Daddy loves that car. Wait a minute, what'd he say? Back on up there. Uh, that carp that was given to him at CatCon a couple of years ago. No, I don't neither. I'll catch my own carp. Thank you very much. That stuff's, oh my God. I'm not going to down anybody's product. There's people that's caught fish on it. But man, I like to puke my guts up open that damn bag up. <laughs> I can use my own rotten carp. I don't need somebody else's. They, there's people that use it though and say it works. I tried it. I I caught a couple of channel cats on it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not saying it won't work in your water. I'm saying it didn't work for me. You know, that's the thing a lot of times. Um, when you try out a new product from somebody, okay, uh, you guys need to try to keep this in mind, okay? Try to be, uh, try to be, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, objective. Yeah. Because here's the thing. You're throwing that bait out there. And if it's not working for you and somebody else is throwing it out in a whole different location and they're tearing fish up, you really can't go in there and say, this bait sucks. It's absolutely 100% no good because that's not necessarily true. It's just not any good where you're at. But where somebody else is at, it may be a, one of the greatest baits they've ever had. You know what I'm saying? So I try not to just flat out uh, disregard or put down somebody's product if I can. Uh, unless I just absolutely know it's just a gimmicky uh, crap that they come up with and they're trying to get a dollar out of your pocket. Now, the gimmicky junk, yeah, oh, I'll dog them the hell out. I will. But somebody that's actually putting out a product that they believe in and it, you know, if it's working somewhere else and it ain't working for you, it's not a bad product. You know what I'm saying? It's just not good for where you're fishing at. You say, you know what? You you can use this down there at Sandy Cooper, or you can use this on the James River, but uh, don't come up here with it because they just don't want it. That's the most uh, diplomatic way you can do that. Okay, yeah, uh, try to be nice, y'all. That gummy, you know what I'm saying? We got so many people beating the hell out of each other these days. The world's just sickening. I'm, I, I got there's times I get tired of it. I do. I just absolutely get tired of it. I mean, every time I turn on TV, somebody's cut somebody's damn throat over something, you know. And I just don't like that spilling over into my world. Life's too short. We got to be happy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I took a sniff of that bag and gagged 10 times. It was pretty bad. But, you know, in their defense, that was that uh, bait that I had it laying in the back of the truck. I'd already opened it, which they say um, that you can open that bait and reseal it, and it does not require refrigeration. Now, that being said, I suggest to you, do not open that bag, reseal it, and lay it in the bed of your truck with the sun shining on it because it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> I don't care what you put back there. It's going to start stinking, man. <laughs> it's, just not, it's meant to be stored in a cool, dry place, apparently. And I put it in a 
the big old hot and steamy nasty <laughs> the spot i put it in was not ideal for storage i promise you that son was beating on that bag for months <laughs> and it was nasty uh, let's see here uh, see, this is exactly why I need a dance day after Stan's day. Great info, talky, talky. Oh, I never shut up, man. And uh, catching warden drama. <laughs> oh, the entertainer. No, man. I, I, I don't have no uh, aspirations of any of that stuff, man. I just, you know what? I, I just want to do what we're doing right now. You know, if if we catch fish, that'd be great. <laughs> but I can't think of a better way. I love spending my Sunday afternoons just hanging out with you guys and cutting up. You know what? I think we're gonna flip the camera. I think we will. Um, I'll have to move down there if I do that though, because the sun's gonna be in my face. It's gonna be well. It's gonna be in my face here in a minute. Any that gum way. We're going to have to move to the other side of the rods and flip the camera around what we're going to have to do. You keep a, keep my screen from getting all blur, 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 blur. Okay. James has a yeah, bag of that carp. James can keep that crap. <laughs> hey, uh, who was it? Did, oh, Dieter Melhorn used that carp and he loves it. Send that carp to Dater Melhorn. I will get you his address and, and, and expedite that information to you in a prompt and hasty manner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Vacuum sealer took a dump. Dude, um, it is so freaking hard to find a good quality vacuum sealer. We went through three of them. Um, granted, we didn't really spend a whole lot of money on them. We did go cheaper on them. But vacuum sealers tear up like you just would not believe. They get what they want. To, it'll, 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 it'll sit there and suck on that bag, and it won't get the air out. And then it'll seal it. And then when you pick it up, you're like, man, it didn't get none of the air out of there. It just sealed it. And uh, because you didn't have the vacuum cleared properly or something, I don't know. But uh, we went through three vacuum sealers, and I got tired of them. I just started taking plastic wrap and wrapping my fish up, putting them in the freezer. Just wrap them real tight in plastic wrap. You know, if you fish a lot, you'll you'll go through them pretty quick. And James is almost two years now. Let's see. Come on, Danny. I have been holding for you for two years no thank you james brother i love you dearly i truly truly do but you can stick that carp where the sun don't shine <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes sir you just enjoy that that's all you buddy Come on, fishy now, bite on my hooky. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Man, you know it'd be totally cool, because that barge is right there. Dude, if you could get out there on that barge, okay, and just suspend a Freddy rod right off the side of that, on the back of that, drop a Freddy rod right off the back of that. You know how much fun that would be? Just right there. That's what I'm talking about. Big old takedown on a Freddy rod off the back of a barge. And that's that's perfect too. Look, see, it's only sticking about a foot and a half out of the water. So you'd be able to dip net even a big fish right there. But if he went under that sucker, you'd be screwed, I'm telling you. He just did an R2-D2 on me and went berserk, sealed the vacuum. The lights went on and out. Yeah, that's what ours did. Yeah, them vacuum sealers, boy. I mean, I, I think if you if you uh dipped way, 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 way down into your wallet and got one of them super high dollar ones, which are guaranteed, 
I think that's the only way you're really going to uh, have any shot of it lasting any kind of time at all. But man, like buy them from Walmart and stuff like that, they just don't last. Are they? Let me let me let me back up. I've just talked about this a while ago. They don't last for me, and you know. And I followed the instructions explicitly, read them very carefully, analyzed every step that I took, and made sure that I was using proper form and technique at loading the fish into the plastic bag, wiping the, out the area where it's going to seal, and stick it into the vacuum trough and channel properly, sealing or closing the lid, pressing the exact amount of pounds per square inch to engage the vacuum system, and damn thing still didn't work. <laughs> What is that bell ringing in the back of my head back there? What is that? Is somebody fishing behind me? What the hell? I keep a hair. I, keep, I hear bells are jingling, jangling, jingling. Bells are jingling. Yeah, we've got to move to the other side. We've got to move to the uh, Brick on through to the other side. Three odd dollars on this one, but has had it for three years. And that's another thing, too, uh, Josh. I mean, being a bait shop, you know that thing has to be getting a, a almost like a uh, what an industrial amount of use. You would almost have to have an industrial vacuum sealer because you're a business that does vacuum sealing on bait. There you go. I just covered them vacuum sealer people's butt. <laughs> Damn, it's getting hot out here. What in the world? Maybe we should have stayed over at catching them both in. You know what I mean? Do you pre feed your baits? That's a good tip. You know what? That's the mistake that I've been making. Um, Dude, uh, if I didn't think about that, but uh, uh, if you'll pre freeze those and get them a little bit stiffened up, does that work better? And how many of y'all, how many of y'all wipe down? You take like paper towels and stuff. Do you wipe down the fish before you put them in the vacuum sealer? How many of y'all do that? I've seen people do that. I just throw their slimy asses in there. <laughs> Because I always figured, you know, slime is part of the fish. And why would you wipe away uh, the slime, you know? It's more natural, you would think. Am I wrong? I don't know. I'm asking here. I'm not trying to give no advice. I'm asking a dang question. But I know a lot of people wipe them off. Do you wipe your baits before you stick it in the bag? Do you leave your shoes by the front door when you come home from a buddy fishing trip? Do you put down the toilet seat? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, and nope. <laughs> How about yourself? <laughs> uh, one of the hurrying fish. Jody ain't getting none. Well, you had two little bit tiny nibbles in this spot, but I mean, they just barely bumped it. All the water off of them before you freeze them. Okay, James. That's good to know. I haven't been doing that. I've just been throwing them in the bag and uh and just freezing the dying things. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I don't like to wipe. I don't either. Takes up too much time. Uh, is that okay, Danny? I've had a good nap and missed a little of your show. Here, catch anything? We caught a cotton picking bolt in over at that other spot, then we moved over here. I don't know if you was awake when, when I, that happened, but uh, we caught a bolt in and we moved to this spot. We're fishing the dude. Look here, I'm fishing the big water, buddy. 
You see that current ripping? That crap right there ain't no joke, man. That is a rolling, 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 rolling on the river, rolling, rolling on the river. <coughs> My lungs are trying to clear up. We're working on it. I'm now fishing in spots I know there would not be any catfish. Wait a minute. I know there would not be any catfish. Why in the world would you fish in a spot that you know there are no catfish? What is that about? What are you doing that first, huh? All right, then. Just go on and do it. James is letting, what did it say, Jody God today. Well, I hear people up on the, there's people up on that observation deck. They're looking through the binocular things. You put a quarter in. You got to put a quarter in them, and you look out through the uh, river, and you look over. That's, that's, uh, oh, what the hell is that? That's Kentucky over there. Yeah, there's Kentucky. My old Kentucky home. Okay. Trying to get where I can see here. That sun's getting in a spot where I can't see nothing. Uh, nope, not my spot. He's the captain. Hold on here. Well, Daddy, it was uh, he kept fish to speak of here in Ohio. I would airmail you some. Oh, don't worry about me, brother. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get me a catfish whenever the time's right. I don't uh see I don't get upset when that because you know if they ain't biting they ain't biting you know you gotta take the good with the bad. You put your time in on the water and if you if you if you if you go out there and you fish every day that you can, you know I mean you gotta be kind of sensible about it. you know a lot of us gotta work and can't just quit your job and go fishing like has. <laughs> <laughs> it don't work for the rest of us like that but you know if you go out and spend as much time as you can on the water and put your time in fishing you know if you're grateful for the for the time that you get to spend on the water you're going to get rewarded you just got to be patient don't worry about it if the fish ain't biting your day's coming it'll be there every dog has its day some dogs get a whole bunch of days in a row. <laughs> and some of us get it once every couple of months. <laughs> but it's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going out. And, uh, you know, because I used to let it bug me. I'd say, oh, my God, I went out and did a live show and didn't catch a fish. Everybody's going to hate me. Well, bull crap. <laughs> Because here's the thing, if the only reason you love me is because I call a fish, then you don't love me, you love the damn fish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think you do. You got to just live your life, man. Have fun, have fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're right, 920. If I could get paid to fish, I would, I'd retire tomorrow. No, I wouldn't retire. I'd go to work and do overtime. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, if fishing was my job, it'd be like, Dan, you need to clock out and go home, dude. You've been here for two weeks. <laughs> uh, it's all right, boss. I'll keep going. Don't worry about it. I got this. Whew. Oh, my chest is hurting. There's my brother, Brian B. Catfishing. What's up, BB? Oh, my God. Two little bitty nibbles here. Man, there's some big fish out there somewhere. You know what really <laughs> aggravates you, though, is I come out here last week, like I said, I threw out three rods. And before I got the third rod stuck in the rod holder, the first rod had an 88-pound fish on it. I'm like, that was quick. <laughs> now I'm going to sit here for two days just to get one channel cat. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? That's how it works, though. Have you ever flew a kite from a fishing pole? Uh, you know what? I have. I have. 
I've actually done that. I was talking to somebody one day. They told me, said, won't you go fly a kite? And I thought, you know what? That ain't a bad idea. <laughs> it's amazing. They must think I'm really good at it because there's been several people told me that. <laughs> go fly a kite. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Um, and forklift sales as service. Early and paid less for four days than I paid for one day this year. Oh, you talking about the hotel? Because, dude, I got ripped off. Uh, when it was all said and done, I found out that I paid three times what everybody else paid for my freaking hotel room. Yeah, we won't make that mistake next year. The better planning, I assure you. Yeah, I paid triple what everybody else play, paid. That hurt too, man. If they wasn't serving free breakfast at that hotel, we'd have went hungry. <laughs> we'd go down in the morning and get breakfast, and I told the kids, stick some of the muffins in your pockets. we got to have lunch later. <laughs> I said we had to spend all our money on the room. <laughs> I came home with a bag full of muffins from the breakfast bar. <laughs> Y'all think I'm making this crap up. I'm not. <laughs> I sure you can tell the truth. Oh, my God. But I'd do it again tomorrow. Uh, but you now it's cheaper. Just do it at on the website yeah i went through uh where i screwed up i went through expedia.com and i'm gonna tell you something i don't know if i did it wrong or what uh but i will not do that again because uh, expedia uh they booked it through a a firm and then so uh expedia booked it through a firm the firm paid the hotel so i had three middlemen to so to speak or two middlemen between me and the hotel. I went through Expedia.com and a firm that paid for it, and then I paid the firm back in payments. But they paid Expedia, and then they paid the hotel. And everybody that was a part of that deal added a little bit more to the bill, you know what I'm saying? And that was a really big mistake uh, to do that. And it, it upset Stacia terrible, I mean, because she thought she'd done really good, you know, getting it worked out where we was making payments on the hotel still have come up with all that money in one chunk. But, uh, man, they really stuck the screws to us. Whenever they sent us the final bill, we go, Oh my God, we paid three times what everybody else did. And so, yeah, you're better off just deal straight with the hotel. Don't get no people involved in the middle. Uh, it, you know, and, and like, and like I said, unless we did it wrong, I don't know. And, uh, we went to try to use the code for the uh, the catfish conference, and they told us all oh, that code's no good. And I'm like, what the crap, man? Everybody else used it, so I don't know. Anyways, that's that's just uh, it's just here and there and over with and done with, and we just learn a lesson and move on with life. You go on a little bit poorer and a little bit smarter. You know what I'm saying? It's all right. You ain't gonna die. My back starting to hurt sitting here. <laughs> this is just torture. Come on, fishes. Let's get some action going here, baby. Let's get something done. I wonder how deep that water is right there. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's just relax for a minute. What do y'all say? I'm trying to see here. Uh, Speedy is a scam, especially on the events. Yeah, I learned that lesson the hard way, buddy. Where was you when I needed you? I know, you was right there. I just didn't get a hold of you right away, did I? I didn't get a hold of you and talk to you about it. 
I'll definitely be asking a lot more people a lot more advice next year. You know, the first two years that we went, we stayed in uh, we stayed in the uh, what is that place? The Crown Plaza. And uh, Stacia liked the crowd, you know, but uh, I don't know. It just it seemed like it went downhill a little bit on us, and so it, it's not what it used to be. I'll tell you that. It wasn't it, the crowd wasn't as good the second year as it was the first year I went. Yeah, I didn't ask. I know. You know, a lot of times you don't want to be that guy on there, though. It's like, hey, everybody, how do you do this and how do you do that? Can you help me tie my shoes? <laughs> it means so damn dumb. You hold your feet up. Do my socks match? <laughs> Can I get some information from you guys on here? I'm going to take my shoes off. Do my socks match? Okay. Are they okay? I always screw up. I put, when I put my socks on, I put them on the wrong feet. I put the left sock on the right foot, the right foot on the, the sock on the left foot. And it's never can get that right. I ain't learned it. I've tried, though. Oh, baby. Got baits in the water. I think we need to throw one of them rods out just a little bit farther and see if it makes a difference. Let's give that a try. And plus, I want to find out how far out I can throw before I get back into that weed line. You know what I'm saying? Let's go with the uh, let's go with the downstream rod, the Mad Cat's Lisa rod. Let's go reel it up and throw it out there. I mean, let's chunk that thing out there. Let's get it on out there. Y'all ready? I'm going to go do it. I'll be right back. There's what the grass situation looks like. It it's still got, you know, there's still some out there. It's not as bad as it was last night. Last night it was bad. It was super bad. It just, I mean, we when we reeled in lines last night, there'd be four feet of that crap on the line. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and run with that bait. No, let's change that bait out. We say, let's just change that.
Now, put a bigger bait on there. And we threw it out a lot farther. Hold on a second. You know what? I'm looking down there at that boat down there on that island. Oh, y'all can't see it. It's right there. That looks like that cotton picking Richard Club. That might be Richard. I don't know. That looks like Richard's boat. That might be Richard Club down there. I ain't seen Richard out fishing much lately. I hope it is him, man. I'd like to see him get back out on the water. I hope it is him. Get that boy back in there. Get him fighting. Get him doing what he does. He, he, man, he's doing an absolutely fantastic job of getting on them fish. It sure does look like Richard, though. It sure does look like he's down there. It may not be. I don't know. Yeah, we threw a way bigger bait on that rod. We took a half a skipjack. And uh, we threw it out there a lot farther. We threw it way out there. So we're right at the edge of the current scene. Now, I'm probably going to get a whole bunch of grass on that rod. I almost bet I do. You can almost bet on it. But we'll see what happens. Brandon to Garbage Disposal. Clark, what's up, Brandon? Had a great time fishing with you last night. I really wish we'd have got on some more fish. But uh, I decided to come back this afternoon. And see if maybe, just maybe, the daytime bite was a little bit better. And so far, it's not been. We uh, fished a different spot earlier today and got on a big old dogfish, grinnel, bowfin, cypress bass, whatever you want to call them. We caught one of them. We had a big takedown from another one, which I'm sure it was the same kind of fish. But uh, no, the fishing ain't, ain't, no, ain't much better today than it was yesterday. There's a little bit less grass than there was last night. But as far as uh, the fish just wearing the rods out, it just it ain't happening. It ain't happening yet anyway. But if you guys missed Brandon fishing with me last night, man, y'all got to check out his channel, man. You got uh, Outdoors Unsupervised. And, he, and that one there, um, man, he does all kinds of crazy stuff in outdoors. And, and uh, he's got a pet chicken named Paula that sleeps in, in the bed with him. <laughs> And you think I'm joking. I'm not kidding. The dude's got a pet chicken, man, and he loves that chicken to death. It's like a, he treats that chicken like everybody else treats their dog, you know what I mean? If you ain't checked out his channel, go introduce yourself, and, uh, and you'll get to meet his chicken, Paula. And uh, he's also got the channel that which he's coming in here under right now is the Garbage Disposal, where he eats massive amounts of food in uh they put time limits on him. He puts the clock on it and see how much he can eat and uh, how much of a period of time. And uh, that boy's pretty cool, man. You guys got to check him out. I met him I met him over a month ago, and uh, uh, we kept in touch, and we did a show last night. We're going to do some more shows here coming up real soon. I'm just waiting on these fish to really start biting really good, and me and Brandon is going to do a lot of shows together. You're going to enjoy it. <laughs> he says, I like to be a touch different. Well, you definitely fit in with me, brother. Uh, all new bait out in one gut pocket. Yeah, I need to get me some, uh, I need to get me some more magic thread or miracle thread or whatever they call that crap. Because I'm going to start uh, wrapping them gut pockets up and throwing them out. Uh, I always do it when I'm down there saltwater fishing, but it, uh, I forget to do it when I'm up here on the river. But uh, a lot of times I'll take a gut pocket. Um, if you take a frozen shad or a frozen skipjack and you cut the gut pocket out while it's frozen and then wrap it real tight with that miracle thread or that magic thread, whichever one they call it, and then as it thaws out, that, uh, uh, that thread kind of squeezes in there and holds that bait together. And you hook it on it, and you can keep that gut pocket uh, all together, and it doesn't sling all the the good stuff out of it when you throw it out there. And it works great, man. It does. I just can't find my miracle thread. I don't know what I did with it. I have no idea what I did with my miracle thread. 
Magic three, and I can't remember which one it is. There's Bug Man. What's up, Buggy? Uh, hey, everyone in chat. I'm on my way back to cleaning. Well, you sure got. You know what? How messy are you? Because you're sure doing a lot of damn cleaning. <laughs> See, I try not to make a big mess. That way I don't have to clean none. Mm. Uh, I ain't caught crap yet. I caught a, uh, caught a both in this morning. Or earlier today. There's Anthony J all day. Anthony J. Do you know where I'm at? You see that right there? I'm sitting right below the observation deck there in the mag. That's where I'd be at right now. Let's see here. Uh, I feel as good as I can. Dude, I could be out here on my deathbed and I'd still show up. I'm going to go fishing no matter what. <clears throat> don't matter to me. I mean, if I'm going to feel like crap, I'm going to do it on the river. I'm not going to do it later on the couch at the house. Don't bother me at all. Yeah, it's it, this usually is a really good spot, but you know, um, that it's hitting me. If some days they're on fire, some days they're not. You just gotta see what you can do with them. Yeah, Anthony has fished this spot before. He drove all, he drove all the way over here from Kentucky and stuff and fished here. And uh, dude, I've got some older videos where I was fishing here using a uh, crawfish for bait. And I was tearing them blue cats up, man, on crawdads. Uh, I'm in California right now, probably for another week. Well, bless your heart. Now, I don't even want to know what the hell you're doing in California. <laughs> Said California is a place you ought to be, so he loaded up the truck and he moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming pools and movie stars. You know what? He'd fit right in with that too. The Beverly Hillbillies. And you put Anthony J up there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a fit right there. I'm telling you. It worked. <laughs> it worked great. You can pull it off, Anthony. Go for it, brother. <laughs> If you guys ever watch Anthony J, you tell me I'm lying. You tell me if you put him in an old episode of the Beverly Hillbillies that he would not fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jed, there's Anthony J. <laughs> oh, what's he doing today, Granny? Well, yeah, I seen him chasing Ellie May around the cement pond. <laughs> Ooh, golly, have mercy. Knock it off, Danny. You're being mean. No, you're not. I'm having fun. I'm kidding. Anthony don't mind. He's got a good sense of humor. Well, this is one of them things where, hey, y'all, uh, call me crazy, but I just sit here and patience is the key. If the fish aren't moving a whole lot, you throw the rods out there and you just wait. I think the longest I waited, I'm looking back and thinking. One time I threw the rods out. And hey, I'm going to tell you who can back me up on this. Avid, Avid was up on panel. He can tell you. I threw the rods out one time, baited them up, threw them out, and let them sit for 13 hours. And then caught a 10-pound blue cat. On, on baits that sat in water for 13 freaking hours. So you tell me, he said, all oh, you need to change bait out every 30 minutes. I'm like, dude, I sat bait out there for 13 hours and caught a fish. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're going to say. Well, you'd have probably caught more if you'd have freshened your baits up a little bit more often. I'm like, yeah, but that requires me getting up out of this chair and walking over there and reeling them up and cutting fish up, putting on a throw it out there. And, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here more and not worry about it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
It ain't like somebody's paying me to do this crap. Ugh. If there's a fish out there and he wants to find us, hey, I'm gonna, if you want to bite my hook, you come to me. I'm not running up and down this damn bank. <laughs> If you're truly hungry, I'm right here. I got the buffet laid out for you. If you ain't hungry, then stay your butt down there wherever it is you're at. I care less. Ugh. That old brother. Jed's brother. No, that would be Granny's cousin. <laughs> It'd be on the Moses side of the family. You know, Granny Granny was a Moses. She wasn't a Clampett. She was a Moses. Her last name was Moses, not Clampett. And then there was the Bodine Bunch. But, of course, I think wasn't... Uh... Yeah, Jethro's mom was Jed's sister. Which made Jethro Jed's nephew and Ellie Mae's cousin. And the family name was Bodine because she married and changed her name from Clampett to Bodine. So Jethro had some Clampett blood in him. But Granny's just straight up Moses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Moses. All right, here's a question for you. All right, let's test you guys' knowledge on this. Who remembers? Now, Granny, her family name was Moses. All right. Now, the Moses family had an ongoing feud that had been going on for, uh, you know, 100 years. The Moses family had a feud going on with another family. Does anybody know what the family name is of the family that was in a feud with the Moses family, which is Granny's family? Who, how many y'all know? Do any of y'all know? Let's see how old y'all are. <laughs> we'll find out right now. Yeah. You're young for a show to know, okay? Why you pick, I ain't picking on Granny. Granny was a hell of a shot. But do you know? 922, I know you better know. What was the name of the family that was feuding with Granny's family, who was, th their name was Moses? No. Y'all give up? No. It wasn't, it wasn't Stone. It wasn't McCoy. It was Bodkin. If you remember, there was an episode where Mr. Drysdale was talking about how he was originally, his family come from the same area that the Clampets come from. And he's out there talking to him and said, oh, he's like telling him, oh, yeah. I said, my family grew up in that area. And uh, Granny asked him, said, what was your family name? And he said, Bodkin. And she said, run, you stinking Bodkin. I'm a Moses. <laughs> oh, all the wonderful information that you will gather from this little bitty show right here. It was Bodkin. Absolutely. Because Mr. Drysdale was from the Bodkin family. Granny was from the Moses family. He walked away a little bit smarter and a little bit dumber today, didn't you? <laughs> you, you know, this is the only show you can watch where you can get information that's actual factual information but the fact that you know it makes you feel stupider. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think it's time to change directions. Let me see here. Yeah, let's make them. Let's take a walk. Oh, Justin, look at that fish jumping out of the water right there. Oh, man. He was smoking it, buddy. He jumped clean out the water. Out of the water. He jumped out all of the water. Just hang on a second here. Somebody left their cotton picking rod holders down here. Which basically, once you leave it down here like that, it, it's, it's basically trash. Somebody got a pile of firewood here too. 
stop. Let's do this. Just a second. Bear with me. Bear with me. Where am I at? There. Let's go there. I can't see crap. This is probably going to be a huge mistake. <laughs> All right, hold on here. I want that turned like that. Let's get you guys leveled out here. Come on, leg, quit fighting me. Get right, get right. Get there. That's better. Got all the rods? Think so. The sun's starting to get where it's uh, shining on the camera. It makes it harder to see. I still can't see it where it's crap, but it's a little bit better if I move over here. No, I can't see it for crap. Oh, there's Parker Pursuits. What's up, Jerry? Daddy is wound up today. <laughs> oh, you just trying to let them guess? I ain't got time to wait on them to figure it out. they Google it. That's cheating. <laughs> See, I don't give them a whole lot of time. Because you give them a whole lot of time, they'll get on there and start Googling it. And they go, I know, I know. No, you didn't. You Googled it. That's why it's, when Daddy Stone, it's a speed round, baby. It's a speed round. You got to go, you got to go, got to go, got to go. I ask you a question, you got to know, either know the answer or you don't. Googling it don't count. You get me? Did you all know that? Daddy is a direct descendant of Curly from the Stooges. Back when they get in trouble from that one. You're going to sue me. Nah, ain't nobody going to sue you. I don't believe in suing people for stupid stuff. Now, if you walk up in my yard and kill my dog right in front of me for absolutely no reason, you're not going to get sued. It's going to whoop your ass. <laughs> Kick my dog, yeah. Come here, because I'm kicking you now. That dog didn't do nothing to you. He's in his yard minding his own business. And you walk across the street, come over here and kick him. Now, you got two options here. You can walk over here, bend over, and let me kick you right in the butt. Or I come over to your house and just whoop the living daylights out of you. It's up to you. You made a bad decision. It's time to pay the price. <clears throat> well, I'm going to have to pick all that crap up before I leave here. Oh, man, I'm so tired of people. They're leaving soda cans and junk everywhere. It's aggravating, I'm telling you. I just can't stand it. I'm tired of picking up after people. I'm tired of it, I say. I don't even like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper can right there. Oh, what the hell that is. Got a bunch of mud in it. They left their little homemade rod holders here. I don't know if I should take them with me or just lay them up here higher on the bank in case they come back. I don't know. I shall decide before I leave here. Oh, there goes that mud. Get out of there. This catfish call. Come on, catfish. 
Come on, catfish. Come on, catfish. Let's go, catfish. They said, will you cut that crap out? <laughs> and fish said, you need to knock that crap off, man. Who played Bubba on Sanford and Sons? Bubba. Not again, Danny. That bar is closing in on you. No, that one there's tied up. He ain't going nowhere. Matter of fact, I got Black Betty throwed out. I, I put it right by the cider and let it slip up and underneath that barge. Now, that barge has been there for at least four or five days. It ain't going nowhere. Here comes the waves from the barge. Come on, barge bite. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Man, that's so peaceful and cool. Look at that. What? Oh, yeah. Reminds me of being on the ocean. Man, that come up here waves. It almost made it to the fishing poles. A lot of times you you get a bite from that right there just because of the fact that when the waves hitting the bank, it washes all kinds of bugs and worms and stuff. Uh, people wonder why they say, you get a barge bite, you got a barge bite. Hold on here. Oh, it's a long... Not again, Danny, that barge. Oh, yeah, I see that. Um, what you don't realize a lot of times is barge going by. The reason you get a barge bite, it's the reason for it. And I mean, other people have told you this information. I'm not sharing anything new. Um, but when that goes through, it churns up the water and it gets all the little bitty clams and mussels and crawdads and whatever have you on the bottom. It stirs them up and gets them to flopping around. And then it washes up on the bank like that. It washes worms and bugs and stuff out there. And it sparks a feeding frenzy sometimes. You know, if under the right conditions, a uh, barge going by, yeah, it'll cause the fish to bite because they know that there's stuff stirred up and floating around now. So they can say, well, you know, it's lunchtime. They rang the dinner bell. But is it an absolute certain thing where if barge goes by you're going to get a bite no absolutely not because you got a factory and all that other crap that i don't worry about like uh barometric pressure you know and the uh, thermocline stuff like that and that's all important to people who uh, who analyze that information and they use that information, and God bless them. They're not wrong. I'm not dogging these people out. Don't you guys go around saying I was bad mouth folks over this because I'm not. Okay? But you got people that are really serious about fishing. And you know what? And, and they've earned it. Uh, they put in the time to study this stuff, man. And they go, okay, I'm going to study and find out what's the perfect barometric pressure to go fishing. You know, is it rise and falling? Is it this number? Is it that number? Uh, is there a thermocline and this and that and what have you? Uh, has the temperature been consistent for this many days or whatever? And they put all this information into a, a little computer or notepad and they press that enter button. And uh, when they get all that information compiled together and then they hit that button on the computer and the computer says, don't go fishing. Not to like a computer to kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah, your your computer is right. It's not wrong. It's not a good time to go fishing if you're worried about catching a lot of fish or something like that, you know. But ain't no damn computer going to tell me when I go fishing when I ain't. I'm going when I want to go. You know what I'm saying? I'll sit out here all day and catch nothing and be perfectly fine with it. I don't care. I don't care a bit.
I ain't kidding. <laughs> I'm sitting here right now. <laughs> oh, man. I love to be on the water. Mm, if I ever become homeless, this is where I'm coming. <laughs> if I lose my house, I'm going to have a tent set up right there. I'll drag my camper over here and say, we live on the river. <laughs> What's your address, Mississippi River? Whip it good. Yeah, whip it. Crack that wheel. Step on a crack, break your mama's back. Hello. La 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 la. Man, I can make a rope out of that. That's bad right there. Okay. Don Henley. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, red maps and take no tech on the wall. Oh, Mark freaking Kratz, man. Dude, he, he went through ranger school and stuff when we was in the Army. In a, that boy was a map-reading fool, man. We just walk around one time. <laughs> I remember we was down in Honduras, man, out in the middle of this jungle. <laughs> I couldn't find my ass with both hands. And Mark whipping out this damn map and this damn grid freaking deal, man. He's slapping it on there and doing all these calculations and stuff. <laughs> and he's sitting there screwing around with a compass and looking at this and that. And he said, "He said, I didn't you know where the hell we're at." He goes, <laughs> he, said, "He said, man, I can tell you within three feet where you're standing." <laughs> he put a dot on the map. He said, "We're right here." I said, "Get our asses out of here!" <laughs> I said, "Lead the way, brother. I'm on your butt. I'm following you. Let's go." The jungles of Honduras are no fun when you don't know which direction to go. <laughs> Them freaking rangers, man. Those guys are something else. Mark Kretsch, my ranger buddy. Whoo! Oh, me, myself, I turned down ranger school. It just looked like way too much effort for me. <laughs> I seen what they did to Mark. When he come back, I'm like, the hell with that. And I said, them, them boys have killed my man. <laughs> they killed me. Danny ain't doing all that. <laughs> yep. Hey, Mark, you remember that time? <laughs> no, dude, we was in this, we was in the jungle down there in Honduras, and we were stationed out or, or, or set up camp, base camp, right outside of a little town called La Ceiba. It was down in Central America in Honduras, a little town called La Ceiba. You remember La Ceiba? And uh, we set up outside that prison. And uh, when the prison got overcrowded, man, they just, uh, they had a big old fence out there. They tell them guys, they said, if you can make it over the fence, well, then, uh, th then you're, uh, you're, you're free to go. They never made it. <laughs> <laughs> the guys would be right across that field trying to, and they'd gun them down and wherever they hit, they'd send four or five guys out there, dig a hole, roll them over in it, bury them next. <laughs> but that wasn't a story I was going to tell. We was, uh, we was up there in this tree line. It, 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 was, it was outside of a damn, uh, I think it was like a pineapple uh, farm or whatever the crap it was. And who was that guy that was with us? Uh, we were sitting there, and everybody was like eating MREs and shit. And he and he started throwing a cracker over there in these bushes. And he throw, he'd take he'd take a bite of food, and he'd take a piece and break it off, and he'd throw it over in these bushes. And we was all looking at him like, what the hell are you doing? 
And he goes, man, there's a little dog over there. He said, every time I throw that food over, he runs out and grabs it. And I go, what? And he said, he said, watch this. And he took a piece of cracker and threw it. The biggest damn rat you ever seen in your life. <laughs> I said, ain't no damn dog. It's a rat. <laughs> he was, I said, man, you're going to have every rat for 10 miles around coming up in our camp looking for crackers, man. You need to cut that crap out. I remember one morning <laughs> we had to we had to go out on, on patrol and uh we went out there and they said you guys gotta be at this location on the map at this time tomorrow. And they said you go ahead and walk through the night and uh and just find you some place to hold up and then we'll meet you there, you know, uh, around you know, around ten o'clock in the morning. Whoo <laughs> So we walked all night long. And uh, we got there it's probably about two hours before sun up. And man, I crawled up and under this bush and uh, I just took my rucksack and stuck it under my head like a pillow. And, uh, and I, I, I was looking up, you know, at the bush over my head. It was kind of keeping the rain and the moisture off of me. So I just got shoved up and under there. And uh, man, it, 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 I woke up that morning and I slowly opened my eyes. And the biggest damn lizard in your senior life was staring me right in the face. <laughs> I was screaming and coming out from there. That scared the living hell out of me, man. The freaking iguana looking thing, man. That thing was huge. I thought that man thing was like three inches from my face, as big as damn lizard. His head was almost as big as mine. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> and Mark and him was like, man, you should have killed it. We could have ate that for breakfast. I'm like, you have all the iguana you want, buddy. I said, I don't like them getting that close to me. Oh. Grandes, you know, yep, 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 yep. That was that prison. Yeah, that was a prison where uh, they didn't parole people uh, like normal. They would let them run across this field, and if you got over the fence, you was paroled. But they were shooting at your butt while you was running. And if you didn't make it, they buried you where you fell, man. That's a true story. Mark can back me up on it. It's rough down there. But I'm going to tell you what, man, I had to time my life in Honduras when we went into the town. Because, man, I tell you what, uh, they they treated Americans like, man, they'd like royalty down there. Dude, they'd bring out like food and stuff, man, and they was bringing us beers and stuff. And it was like, oh, no, 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 you America, you eat this, you you want ball, we bring off food. That's Chinese, that's not Mexican. Hell, I got <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm being offensive. I am. I can't do a Mexican accent. I can do a Chinese accent. <laughs> he said, what the hell was a Chinaman doing in Honduras? <laughs> Damn if I know. <laughs> man, we was a lot younger then. You know, it. we was kids, man. That was crazy. But I remember, uh, y'all don't mind if I just tell some stories, do you? I know I'm missing a lot on chat. Half the company had the shits and those little of tobacco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, we were like dipping and stuff. Uh, yeah, they liked our money. They sure did. But the exchange rate down there was eight to one. Like one American dollar was worth eight of theirs. So, man, you could buy like all kinds of stuff down there. And, uh, and you, you're only paying one eighth of what it costs back in the States, man. We were buying like handmade machetes that they, they go down there and had forges out on the street. They were hammering out and building these, man, I mean, really cool knives and stuff. And you go in there and get that knife for just like a couple bucks, man. I mean, they didn't care. You just give them a couple dollars, man. You got a, a knife that was probably worth 150, 200 bucks at home. But uh, I know that doesn't match up on the exchange rate. I'm just giving you an example. They had this one guy making knives that, dude, he would sell it to you for a couple of dollars. And, and you go back home, and that knife would cost you a fortune. But um, one of the things that I remember the most, um, and I may have told this story before, but I know you guys, some of y'all, a lot of y'all country folk. I mean, you're watching damn catfishing shows. You know your country, right? But uh, 
you know the difference between a store bought tomato. You know, you go buy a tomato from the grocery store uh, that's been picked half green and they ripened it and then put it. There. It you know it just don't taste. It don't taste like a tomato to me because a country folk knows a vine ripened tomato. Tomato. The difference between a vine ripened tomato that you picked out of your garden and the tomato that you got in the store, okay? Everybody knows. Ain't no comparison. Now, let me tell you what a lot of you don't know. A lot of you don't know what a banana really tastes like. A lot of you don't know what a pineapple really tastes like. Because when you go down there in them jungles and stuff, and these kids come around there from the towns, they come they, they walk into your camp. And we get MREs with little candy bars and stuff in them, you know? And we tell kids, that, I'm going to give you this candy bar, and you go pick me a pineapple and a couple of bananas. And we'd give them the candy bar. And they'd come back with a bushel basket full of damn bananas and, and pineapples. But, man, we'd go to eat that pineapple. And you say, oh, my God. I said, this is the best thing I've ever ate in my life. I said, I, I've never had a pineapple taste like this. And it's because they were buying right, they were ripened on the vine. They weren't picked green and chipped. Same thing with the bananas. The bananas, you get them green, you put them on your counter, and they get ripe. And you don't want to say ripe, and you say, oh, that banana's good. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Get you a banana right off the cotton picking plant that's ripened on the plant. It's just like a vine ripened tomato. You don't know what a banana tastes like, and you don't know what a pineapple tastes like until you went to Honduras and got one fresh right off the plant. Bam. I'm telling you. It's good stuff. Anyways, I am hope y'all enjoyed that. A little bit of tidbit of information for you. Have you seen that blue Jerry guy? Everybody's seen that damn blue. He called me when he called it. They're saying it. Jerry Clark called me. He said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, dude, I can't quit shaking. I can't quit shaking. Parker standing on a boat. He's shaking like a dog trying to pass a peach pit. <laughs> <laughs> he was pumped up and you know what he had every right to me that was an awesome fish jerry you know we, we're gonna try to do it this year i don't know i don't want to jinx it so far this year is looking a little better for us than last year you know we're getting on a little bit better fish more quality um i mean today sucks <laughs> But overall, you know, Mississippi River Rats is coming out pretty good. Um, still waiting on Richard to get out here and get some stuff done. I, he will. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about Richard Cluck. Richard Cluck going to do some fishing this year, and he's going to do some really cool stuff. I guarantee it. Creole's been getting into the 40 and 50 pounders left and right, so we know he's going to bust out and, and get all crazy on us. Um, I've got, you know, I've only caught one decent fish this year, <laughs> but it just so happened to be my PB, a 88.82 pounder. So that was a good way to start the year off. The problem I have a lot of times is the Danny Stone curse. It never fails. Every time I catch a big fish, that, man, it may be forever before I catch another fish that's even worth talking about. I mean, it just seems like it's just, it, it just like, it's like, okay, uh, there's yours. And we'll see you again in three months. <laughs> it seems like a, when I caught that 70 pounder, it took forever for me to catch another fish. And then last February, I got that 63, and it took forever for me to catch another big fish. Hold on, what's got going on there? Nimrod's doing something behind my back. I seen that. You can't look at them, man. They're gonna, they won't bite if you look at them. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can see them in the screen. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Go ahead. Go ahead and take it. <laughs> oh, man, you're not cool to be if it did. I don't count on it, though. Oh. Uh, 
SEL, not you. Oh, wait a minute. A dot red chair. Knock me off the A dot red chair. You know what? Bull crap. Uh, Jerry Parker gonna have show me video of him with that that red that A dot hook. Cause you know what I told y'all the other night. I said I don't give a crap. Uh, the next fish that Jerry Parker catches that's bigger than mine, he gonna say, "Oh yeah, I got it on an A dot red hook." I'm like, yeah, yeah. He just trying to see. Here's the thing about Jerry Parker. I love Jerry Parker to death. I do, I do. But that boy just can't stand let me have nothing. <laughs> he won't do it. He goes, hey, I caught the biggest fish on the on the A-Dot Christmas hook. He goes, give me a minute. <laughs> that caught picking Parker. No, man, I guarantee he caught that because he's been slinging them red hooks like crazy, man. We absolutely love those red hooks. They're awesome. I'm running red hooks on the. Let's see, we got five rods out, and four of them have the crimson red hooks on them. Four of them got the crimson reds on there. The problem is, you got to get a fish to bite them before they work. <laughs> Come on with it now. Let's go, let's go. Man, I swear that looks like Richard down there. I don't know. I hope it is. I hope he's out fishing today. But it looks just like Richard Cluck's boat down there. And he's fitting right in that spot where we caught all those fish that day, too. That day last February. Not this year, but year four. He's sitting right in that spot where we caught 18 catfish back to back. We tripled up once and quadrupled up once. I almost bet you that's Richard right there. Them boys down there throwing their soda cans in the water and they're floating by. It's mighty nice of them. Of course he did. Naturally. I'm getting tired now. The sun's making me sleepy. Uh, any luck? Man, I caught a freaking bulb in on the... If you go up this right here, you see where that island is down there? You go back up in that channel. I caught a bulb in up there and had another one grab the rod, bend it down. I've had a couple of little bead taps here, but no fish today other than a bulb in. And I'm not counting that bulb in. I said, oh, I didn't skunk. I caught a bow fin. I said, nah, you skunked. That bow fin don't mean nothing. I hate them caught picking bow fin. I mean, I don't want them all dead. I mean, I'm not like hating them to where I say, I wish they were all gone. I'm like, no, good. I just don't like dealing with them. I ain't scared of them or nothing. It's just I'd rather they'd stay out of my way and let the catfish get on the hook instead of fighting them stupid things. Man, this is a game of patience right here. Uh, do, 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 do. You as well. Woke up from a nap. Boy, there's a bunch of y'all taking naps today. What the crap, man? One yet, so you got me beat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably I saw that uh, I saw that fish Jerry Parker caught probably about twenty seconds after he turned it loose. Cause uh, that dude he, he's sitting there holding, it, getting the pictures. He turned it loose and he sent me the pictures, and then my phone was ringing. And uh, Stacy goes, "What is it?" I said, ah, "It's freaking Parker. I guarantee you, he's gonna tell me he's got another big one on." And I was sitting on the couch, and sure enough, I answered the phone. He goes, "Oh my god." 
He said, dude, I can't, I can't quit shaking. I can't quit shaking. He said, calm down. You'll be all right. You just got to sit down for a minute and breathe, son. Just breathe. You'll be all right. Don't worry about it. Whoop. Let's go. Yeah, Parker had to sneak up into the Missouri River, though, didn't he? <laughs> he was just off the Mississippi by a little shot. Come on, fish, let's go. There's tell me measurements on that fish. I don't think Parker knows how to read the damn tape measure for one thing. He needs we'll see here. Thompson, there's a trash can every fifty feet, lazy people. Yeah. Uh, trash. Oh, don't worry about it, man. I mean girl, uh Lisa. Now, if you're watching my show and you're uh, and you're one of the people that can uh, that can watch this crap and stay calm and relaxed, then God bless you. <laughs> you fell asleep. <laughs> Most people that are on edge going, "What the hell's he doing?" Oh my God! Whoa, crap! One, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to make sure I can see all them rods. How come I can? Okay, I see them all now. That one's almost behind the other one. Let's go, kitty cat. Let's go. Let's go, kitty cat. Now, what I'm waiting on now is for him to decide the official weight of Jerry Parker's fish because he used a Mad Cat's hog scale, which goes to 110 pounds. That fish hit 110 pounds on that scale. So, are we forced to concede that that fish is 110 pounds because that's as high as the scale went? Or could it have been bigger? Okay. Or are we stuck saying it's 110 because that's all the scale would weigh? I don't know. I think that fish was quite a bit bigger than 110 pounds. I mean, I've seen pictures of it, different angles and stuff like that. I'm going to say it's a little bigger than that. But, I mean, he may have to suck it up and say 110 because that's all the scale would read, you know. But I think he's, I honestly think he's getting cheated on that. I think Mad Cats needs to step up. And uh, I think minimal, minimal, Mad Cats needs to make a scale that'll weigh up to 150, let's say 150 pounds. Mad Cats needs to make a scale that'll at least do 150 pounds. Because right now the current world record, current world record is 143. You tell me you can't add seven more pounds to that and go ahead and make that scale? Come on, fellas, let's get it done. And you know what? It'd be even nicer if you just go ahead and make it 160 or between 160 and 200. You know what I'm saying? So it gives us a little elbow room, a little wiggle room there. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I'm afraid that we're going to run into the situation this year because, uh, man, I, I think this year is going to be a, a, a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, not just, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people out there. You got, you got James cool catch. You got, uh, Daryl and Woody. You got, uh, team snag whiskers. He's going to get back in the game. You got Stan three. I mean, these are, these are hard hitting people. Austin and, and Chad Fields, is, man, I tell you what, y'all better watch out. Chad Fields got that new boat, and he's a super threat now. He ain't no freaking joke, man. But my fear is there's going to be people that's going to be catching fish that are over 110 pounds, and then all we can weigh them with is the Mad Cat scales that go to 110. Now, those are great scales. I've got one uh, I ordered the other day, and I'm waiting for it to be shipped to me now. 
but you're going to start getting in a situation where you got people that's got bigger fish in that scale away, and that's going to be a problem. You know what I'm saying? I honestly think so. There's going to be a couple people that's going to get bigger fish than that this year. I believe that with all my heart. It's going to happen. This is the year of the catfisherman right here. And I'm not talking about me personally or anybody. I'm talking about uh, the catfish community in whole. It's going to be our year uh, together. That you're going to see some bigger fish because people are putting in uh, uh, more effort with more knowledge and more time on the water. And you're going to see some bigger fish this year. I believe that with all my heart. And I'm just hoping. If that mad cat scale that goes up to 110 pounds is up to the up to the challenge of what's fixing to come at it. Because there's gonna be a lot of people set up. It's at 110. It's all I get out of it. 110. It's all I get up. Mad cats, come on. I'm 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 asking you. Get that weight up. Just like Stan 3 says, get that weight up. I want to see a scale that measures between 150 and 200, somewhere in that ballpark. Pick you a spot in that area. It's gotta be way more. It's got to be able to weigh more than the current world record. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on. You can do it. I'm not dogging you out. I'm giving you a challenge. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. We need bigger scales. We need people with bobcat forklift trucks down here lifting fish up. <laughs> He pulled that fish up with a bobcat skid steer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't think we're going to catch nothing today. But I thought that before. And we just sit here and wait and see what happens. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's, I got an echo going over there off that barge. That's cool. People go, what is he down there talking about? What is he doing? Uh, I got tired. I had to wash the rod for a minute. <laughs> Uh, Catfish Curtis, what's up? Something by say, huh? How's the bite? It sucks. The bite is really crappy today. I should have took my butt on around them being down there to that one hole below that wing down is where I should have went. You know, I always sit here in a spot. I'll go to a spot that's easy to get to just because of convenience. And then I'll sit here and piss and moan and cry about where I should have went. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, wait, what's that song? I don't care really, Mo. I don't care really, Mo. Whoa. Bite, no bite, just whatever you want to do, fish. Just <laughs> blazing fish. Y'all ain't gonna grow if you don't eat. You better get out there and eat. Come on, let's go. I got you some food out there waiting on you. It's yours for the taking, free of charge. Give you a free lip piercing. Bring you up, take your picture, and turn you loose. Make you famous. And all you got to do is eat that bait. Don't you want to be on a picture on the wall at CatCon? Eat that bait. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't think we got a ton of grass hitting us today because the rods aren't been over double like they were last night. Man, I swear that's Richard Cluck down there. It may not be, but it sure looks like it.
I can't tell you boy. It sure looks like rich. Oh, Lordy. I'm pretty sure that's Richard. It looks like it. I'm ready to just start throwing crap in the water. Sticks and rocks. <laughs> like a kid. Boom. Chuck it out there and splash. That's what I mean to do. I need to go over and smack that water real hard with the stick and wake the fish up. Come on, wake up. Don't think it'll work. It might. Let's go wake them up. You want to wake them up? Let's wake the fish up. At the very least, I'll scare them away from this bank out there where that line's at. <laughs> Ooh, man, wouldn't y'all crap if them rods started going down now? Y'all be out there beating the hell out of the water <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> you see them on the boat. Come on, fish. Let's go. Get out of here. <laughs> I've seen another guy do this on the show. Just wipe the hell out of him. Let's go. <laughs> Beat the crap out of water. Get them going. Get them going. Whoo. What time is it? Man, that extra hour is going to kill me today. It's 435 here. Up in there, Ron. What's going on, buddy? Slap it longer. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No, Danny. Bad Danny, bad Danny, don't do it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm fixing to start doing some traveling. I know what it is. I've done fished all these holes out. There ain't nothing left here no more. <laughs> Caught them all. Nope, that ain't the case. They're out there. Somewhere over the rainbow, there's a big blue. <laughs> Come on now, people, let's go. Fishing time. I'm just going to quit worrying about them rods and just start hanging out, we say. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I ain't going to lie, after last week fishing and doing as good as I did, I'm kind of going through withdrawal. <laughs> I'm having withdrawal symptoms. I need a big catfish. You know what, though? Uh, I knew. I knew when I caught that big fish last week that it was just going to be a better time. Uh, I mean, I knew it was a matter of time before Jerry Parker come up there and throw one bigger up there, you know. Uh, but to be honest with you, the person that I thought would uh, most likely uh, follow suit on that and catch a bigger fish was James from Cool Cats Fishing. Because I, I swear, man, if you go back and look, every time I caught a, a decent fish, uh, within no time at all, James would catch one just a little bit bigger. And I go and catch another decent fish. James catch one just a little bit bigger. We, 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 we kind of developed this pattern between me and James and we talked about it. He goes, Danny, I said, he said, man, you need to get off your ass and catch something. He said, 
He said, because I can't catch something bigger than yours until you catch a big one. And Jade started messaging me, man. He said, come on, let's go. He said, I can't catch a big one until you catch one. And I, I thought for sure James is going to do that. But no, Parker got up yesterday morning and he said, I'm going to go catch me 521 skipjack. I'm going to the Missouri River and I'm beating the crap out of Danny Stone. You watch me. And his whole goal was set up that day to do that. But we do, we push each other too. Between uh, me and Parker Creole and Richard, we all push each other to, to get out there. There's been a lot of times that we just, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, I didn't feel like going fishing or one of them didn't feel like going fishing. But the other two or three would be going and you'd be like, oh, man, I was going to take today and just kind of chill out. But you know what? If you guys want to hit the water, we'll hit the water. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, it's almost time for us to start doing River Rat shows again. It's coming up real soon. And uh, I'm going to start uh, probably doing my Saturday nights again like I do every year. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, I got a secret. I forgot about that. Oh, oh man. I got something coming up that I forgot all about. Because I ain't supposed to tell y'all. But I'm going to start doing Saturday nights again like I, I've done every year for the past three or four years. I've always done Saturday night fishing with DSO and friends and stuff. If y'all look back and remember that. We'll start doing it again, but we got something different coming up this year. I got somebody that's probably going to do every other Saturday night with me, and we may do it on his channel. We may do it on mine. But uh, I think y'all's going to like what we got cooking up. Me and somebody that you guys all know. It ain't one of the River Ranch guys neither. It's somebody else. And, and it's not Brandon from... Uh, Outdoors uh, unsupervised last night is somebody else, but you guys all know him and y'all love him. And we've been talking on the phone and talking about doing a show like every other week with him and me, a nighttime fishing show. And uh, that's all I'm going to let you do is sit there and wonder about that. Or who in the world could it be? Y'all can take some guesses if you want. Try to see if you can figure out who it is. But it's going to be somebody that you might not ever expect, or you might say, well, that makes perfect sense. You just don't know. Fishing fever, what's going on? Catfish beer outdoors in here. Man, I ain't catching crap today. I just got back from pond fishing with my daughter. She slayed, got some great live bait. Well, good deal, man. I'm trying to, here, here's the thing, uh, you know, it, it's probably hurting me too. Is, uh, man, I'm using up all the oldest bait I can find in the bottom of my freezer. I, I don't want to just throw it away because I took the time to catch that skipjack and that shad. And, uh, I don't want to just pitch it. So I'm throwing old bait. Now, I do have that one pack in there of the shad that I caught. When did I catch them? Was it Friday night? I think I came out here through the net. Or Saturday morning. I don't know. This time change has got me all messed up. But one day this week, I went and caught some shad. That's the freshest bait I got today. It's wrapped in plastic wrap and frozen. But I've got a bunch of skipjack that's been in my freezer for like six to eight months. And I'm throwing that and trying to get these fish to eat it. I need to get rid of it, and I don't want to just throw it away because that's wasteful. I don't like throwing stuff away like that. If I can use it, I can use it. At the very least, though, at the end of the day, I'm going to start chunking it in the river, and the fish can eat it when they feel like it. I'm not just going to throw it in the trash can and let the trash man haul it off. I'm going to put it back in the water where the fish, Woo, man, that's a nice boat. Man, that thing, that boat's black as midnight, too, man. I would not paint a boat that dark of a color. Because you know that sunlight's going to eat his butt up, man. It's going to be hot on the floor of that boat, stepping on that black floor. That's a pretty boat, though. Hey, 
Hey, Jerry Parker's in here. Hey, call Richard Cluck. I'm going to watch that guy in that boat down there and see if he picks his phone up. <laughs> I swear that's got to be Ricky. Come on, people now. Shine on each other. Everybody come together. Learn to love one another right now. Right now, right now, right now. I wish you fish and learn to love that bait. Mm -hmm. What is that? Grass on the line? Huh? I can't believe this. I'm getting tired. I stayed up too late last night. Uh, just finished supper. What have I missed? Not a damn thing. These fish ain't biting for nothing. We could have stayed over and caught griddle all day long. These fish don't like that time change at all. They ain't liking it. They ain't liking it one bit. Time is it? I'm going to try to get home. I'm not staying out here until it starts to get dark. I don't care if I do got extra hour. I'm sitting here so long, my back's hurting now. Too lazy to get up and walk around. <laughs> Just don't feel like it. No, no, here comes that boat. I don't get a better look at it. He's driving around in circles just like Richard does, scanning, scanning, scanning. I fix and find out right now. It's coming this way. I'm going to see if that's Richard. It may not be. It sure looked like his boat, though. Oh, y'all see that carp jump out of the water down there? He banged his head right inside that barge. I bet that hurt like hell. <laughs> What'd you do that for? That's stupid. Let me look. Man, I'm telling y'all, that's Richard Cluck right there. There he goes. That's Richard. Yep. I'm about 95% sure that's Richard Cluck. Man, if he goes to that boat ramp down there past the new one, I guarantee you it's Richard because he's the only one using that boat ramp right now. If he's leaving out this early, them fish ain't biting. Because he hit some of the best spots you could hit down there in that boat. And if he's leaving already, that means they are not biting at all. If you can't catch them in that spot, you can't catch them today. Period. That spot has never let us down. I may just be calling it myself here in a little bit. I'm getting kind of tired. Because it's lighter than it, it really is. Yeah, that's Richard. He's heading down to the old boat ramp. He, he's in the new one. I guarantee it. I may get out here and try to run down and see if he did good today. Go holler at him. I ain't seen him in weeks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's good. I'm going to have to start mustering up energy and just start dragging the cart uh, that mile-long walk down the levee over there around the bend and start fishing that wing down if I'm going to get fish. You know what? No, you know what I want to do? I think it's about time to hook the camper up and head up to Trail Tier State Park one weekend. I need to do that. There's the thought right there.
I need to take one weekend and go trail tears. I think that's gonna be my next uh my next adventure. Wait a minute, where the heck is he going? Oh, I see what you're doing. He's going around that island and going to that wing dam down there on the other side of it. That's what he's doing. I'm on to you. I know what you're doing. You better be careful down there. That one down there ain't no joke. That wing dam down there gets you killed. It is not safe at all. Because it's got water rolling around it like a uh, it's like the worst rapid you've ever seen on any river anywhere. In a, I got there a job boat one time and almost got uh, pulled down into that. Man, I barely got out of there. I almost died doing that crap. Oh, wait a minute. Nah, he's going to the boat ramp. He's calling it. He's going in. Well, if he ain't catching nothing, I ain't going to catch nothing. So I might as well get the hell out of here. I ain't going to spend some quality time at home on the couch. We got to spend some time out here today, so we ain't hurt. Let me see. What time is it? How long have we been live? Let's find out. I can't see nothing. Four hours and 29 minutes. Fishing favor, new member. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate you, buddy. Why is my chat froze up? That gum it. Hang on, guys. I'm going to refresh. Relax. Yeah, my chat was stuck. Uh, there we go. I'm off to cook dinner. Good luck, Danny. Yeah, I'll get kind of hungry myself, too. I think I'll fix it to call it here in a minute. It's 430. We're going to go probably about 15 more minutes, and then I'm going to get on out of here. We've been live since 1230. It's 450 is the time. Been live for four hours and 30 minutes. You know what? Screw it. I'm going 10 more minutes and I'm going home. I got some things I need to get done while I got this extra sunlight. You know what I'm saying? We'll go 10 more minutes, y'all. See, Parker even went home already. So there goes Richard. He's going home. Parker's already at the house and I'm the only dumb ass still sitting out here. <laughs> Well, if they're going home, I'm going home. Parker probably needs a nap after fighting that big old fish day. You know what? That Here's the thing. Everybody's going on and on and on about that big fish. I got news for y'all. That ain't the only damn fish he caught today. He caught, he caught fish today that uh, was nice enough fish. That he could have posted pictures and everybody been like, oh man, yeah, you go, Parker, get them, buddy. But then he's going to top it off by throwing a hondo on there on top. And so all them fish that everybody else would have been crazy and killed for uh, basically just got forgot. Oh man, what happened to my screen? My screen just went black. We ain't starting that crap again, is it? Caught four day and most uh, lost a massive sturgeon. See, I told y'all. Your dollar ninety nine a month better go to Coda. Well, fine then. <laughs> Coda needs to start her own dang channel. <laughs> that dollar ninety nine a month goes to pay for gas to take to go pick up Coda and bring her out and go fishing. So I appreciate it. It helps out a lot. A little bit here and there all adds up. It sure does. What time is it now? 4.52. Yeah, we're going to go about eight more minutes, you guys. And I'm Because Jerry Parker's done went home. Richard Cluck just drove by. He's going home. So I'm going to follow their example and get out of here and go to the house. And, you know, oh, crap, I got to take, what time is it? I said, I got to take my medicine in about an hour. I forgot to bring it with me. I'm glad I remembered that. I'm going to 
prescription medication schedule. And I don't want to miss that. So we're going to shut it down here in a minute and get on out of here. I'm tired. Like Forrest Gump said, I'm tired. I think I'll go home now. Well, what the rest of us supposed to do? What the hell are we going to do now? Oh, I guarantee you there'll be somebody go live. There's always on a Sunday afternoon. You probably have a skip jack. Hey, I know that uh, River Cats tackle Lance McCoo guy and them. You know, I, I thought about that. I was going to stay out here and fish while they was doing their show and come up on panel. But man, I just ain't got the energy left. I've been, you know, I, I've been out here acting all wild and crazy. And you know how much energy, why is my camera? Man, my screen keeps shutting off. What is going on? I got a hundred percent battery. I ain't caught nothing but a grinnel today. But my screen is hey, do you guys remember that time whenever uh, the the phones was started going black on your screen while you was doing live? It's starting to do that crap again. I don't know what's up with that. And I can't remember what we did to fix that. There was something we did to fix that. I think, I don't know if we deleted StreamYard and, and pulled it back up or something. I don't think that's what we did. I don't want to delete my StreamYard because I have to pay for it every month anyway. Watch another YouTuber. Yeah, Lance McCuga will be going live here after a while on the Rivercats Tackle Show. Uh oh, uh oh, hang on. We just got a bite on that Jody rod. Hang on. This screen better not go black. Oh, yeah, we're getting a bite on the Jody rod. Is he going to get it? He was tapping. Dadgummit. Why is my screen going black? I hate that crap. Yeah, we were just getting about. We're going to hang out for a few more minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on that rod right there. Let's give him a little bit more time. That got my hopes up. He was pecking on it. But now i got to watch and make sure the screen don't go black. You got to tap the screen to bring it back. I don't know what's up with that crap. I wonder if I'll try refreshing again. Maybe that'll do it. Let me try refreshing again. All right, let's keep it on and see if that fixed it. He's still biting. He's still biting. Oh. He's he's staying with it, tapping on it. We're gonna keep an eye on that rod for a minute, guys. I'm gonna see if he's gonna get on there or not. Now I hope the screen don't go black. Crap. I bet that's a channel cat. Either a little bitty blue. Come on now. Oh. 
Where are you? I am a. Uh, I'm right. Okay, there's the observation deck in New Madrid. I'm just upstream of the observation deck. I mean, I'm just maybe I don't know sixty feet upstream. If you come to observation deck, you see that barge anchored there. Dad gum it. Yeah, the screen keeps going black. What the crap, man? We had a virus on the phones last year where it was doing that, and they fixed it somehow, but apparently it's back. You got to tap the screen to keep the live going. Tap the screen to keep the live going. I don't know if that fish going to get on there or not. I don't think he is. That was just the last minute chance to screw with my head. That's all he did. I don't know if he got that bait off there or just quit by it. You watch, that fish will get on there and then the screen will go black. If it does, that's going to make me so that gum mad. I think he quit on me. He quit biting. I don't think that was a very big fish anyway. He didn't act like it. Phone setting screen. Hold on. Phone setting screen. And then what do I do? Yeah, there it goes. It's going black. See, I got to tap it when the screen goes black. Okay, I go to phone setting screen to do what, Josh? Yeah, because we all figured out how to fix that last year, but I can't remember what we did. I think it started doing it on James's phone the other night, too. Oh, there's a little tap. Come on, son, eat it. He's still pecking at it. I'm not going to pull it away from him until I know he's gone. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, screen timeout. Hit display. Change timeout setting. I think. Can I do that without leaving the stream, though? Let me try it real quick. I may lose you guys. I'm going to try to see if I can go to phone settings. And So just bear with me. Because that fish is still tapping on it, Rob. We're going to try to catch him. Oh, crap. Mobile hotspot, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, auto rotate, airplane flashlight. Where in the crap is the... I don't know where that setting's at. Power saving? Turn it on, turn it off. I don't know. Media output. Oh, what did I hit? Oh my God. What did I do? I don't know. We're just going to have to ride it out, guys. We're fixing a late video, right? I don't think that fish is going to get on there. I think it's just a little bit messing with me. I'll have to figure it out when I get home. That yellow rod's starting to be in, but the way it's shaking, I know that's grass on the line. I can tell that. That's definitely grass on the line. And he might have eat the bait off that other rod. 
It's already three minutes past what I said I was going to do. Oh, crap. I think I'm going to give up on it and go home. I think I am. I hate to give up on that fish, though, because that's the first one I've had pecking on it in a while. I don't know. If it's, I'll tell you what. If that screen goes black again, I'm going to come back, and, and then I'm going to go home. Please so display advanced screen time out. I'll have to wait till I'm down to the live stream to mess with all that because I'm not that smart. I'll wind up kicking y'all out of here, kicking me out of here or something. There it goes. Going black again. That gum it. Option four steps. Damn woodpecker. Yeah, I think that fish done moved on. Turn it off, catch a fish, post it later. <laughs> I am not doing that today. If I shut this phone off, first thing I'm going to do is reel them rods up. I am not going through that agony and misery again where you catch a fish and it's not on camera because that really just aggravated the crap out of me. I am not going to let that fish get on that rod. If I have to shut this camera off, I'm pulling that rod immediately. Because that is the most aggravating thing I've went through lately. Is what caught that fish and didn't have the camera running. It just you just have no idea how much that stressed me out that I missed that fight on camera. It just it just makes me sick. And I just cannot get over it. I've tried. I cannot get over it. Nah, I think he's done. All right, we'll let the go phone. We'll let the phone go black one more time, and then I'll refresh it, or I'll tap the screen. If that fish don't get on there by the time I do that, that's it. It just went black. All right, so I'm not gonna sit here and deal with this screen going black stuff. I'm gonna get out of here. How's the bite? It sucks. I just got a really. I had one banging on it, but he was not hitting hard. But my phone's starting to do that thing where the screen goes black and you got to tap the screen and bring it back. Oh, crap. That was on hit. Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. It came off. I'm going home. <laughs> Man. I told you when I caught that big fish the other night, it was going to bring the Danny Stone curse. Did y'all see that rod go down? And the reason he didn't hook up is because there's a piece of plastic hung on the hook, a little bit piece of plastic. It kept it from getting in his mouth. It's the Danny Stone curse. Y'all saw the rod go down, right? That was a fish. No doubt about it. But if, I'm going to bring you the hook and show you why that hook did not hook that fish. Had to make a black screen. There's the bait that he had a hold of. Look at this piece of plastic over the point. He found the bait, but it didn't hook up because that was on the hook. Right there. You saw the rod go down. That's 100% no doubt that was a fish. 
he was jerking and pulling and slamming it. But there was a piece of plastic hung on the very tip that kept him from hooking up. The Danny Stone curse oh, is here. I'm done with it. I'm over it. I'm going home. You gotta be kidding me. Sat here all day long. Finally get a fish to slam that rod. And he was pulling too. That wasn't no monster, but he I guarantee you he's ever bit at 20 pounds. And then what happens? The curse of catching a big fish. I told y'all it's gonna get me. It always does. And I get a piece of cotton picking plastic bag on the hook that keeps it from going into his jaw. I'm a little aggravated right now. Does that mean I'm going to quit and go, I'm done with this crap. I'm sick to death. Nah, I'll be back next weekend. <laughs> Man, I can shake it off faster than a wet dog. I'll tell you. It'll be all right. That's a pretty good takedown, though. Now, I got to fix this black screen crap. It's still doing it. That's a pretty decent takedown, though. He was, he was wailing on it. It just, uh, it's like one of the things I always say. K sera sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. K sera sera. Just wasn't meant to be. And all you can do is accept it and not worry about it. You know what I'm saying? But. Today was absolutely not a loss for me because I got to hang out with my friends. We got to joke around a little bit. You guys got to spend some time on the Mississippi River with me. We didn't get no fish. Got a nice takedown. Caught a bowfin over there up that creek. And we caught a fish on a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> that bait was completely... the the was exposed where the fish could get it and that bag was right on the freaking point of the hook man can you believe that crap and so he was pulling on it all he wanted to i mean he was wearing it out but there was no way with that double layer that was one of them hefty 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 tough bags that point was not coming through that plastic at all <laughs> look at the bright side we picked up some trash today. We got a piece of plastic out of the river. We're going to take that with us because I don't never want that son of a bitch to get on my hook again. <laughs> I'm getting at the, <laughs> I'm getting that plastic the hell out of here. I promise you. <clears throat> guys, I'm going to shut it down and go home. Thank you guys for all hanging out with me today. Uh, I know we didn't get on nothing, but hey, man, you got to see some great fish today from Jerry Parker and and I'm sure some other people today will catch some fish. I'm just out here goofing off, man, and doing what I do. But, uh, our day's coming. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll be we ain't going. We don't get discouraged and we don't give up. But how many people you know is going to tell a story tonight? Danny had a takedown, had the fish on there, was reeled up, and damn hefty bag stopped him dead in his tracks. <laughs> It's going to happen to somebody. Yeah, I'll take the lick so you guys don't have to. You know, I don't care. It'll be all right. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to end it. Ready? Here we go. Okay. You're my brothers. You're my sisters. You're my catfish family. God bless each and every one of you. You know, you know, you know I love you. Every one of you. Each and every one of you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate you. And I love you dearly from the bottom of my heart. But we're going to head home, get some rest, and get ready for work tomorrow, okay? But we'll see you again real soon. Bye, everybody. Love you. <laughs>